Hey everybody, Console Collector here. Today's video is my 5,000 subscriber special. Yes, we have recently hit 5,000 subscribers on the channel, and I want to celebrate by having my very first podcast. And I am very proud and excited to announce that Tay from the Life of Tay Gaming is my very first guest. I'd love to do some more of these in the future, so if you guys enjoy this podcast, let me know in the comments below. All right, with that said, let's get right into it. Hope you enjoy. Hey everybody, Console Collector here. Today's video, we got a special one. I'm doing my very first podcast on the channel, and my very first guest is Tay from the Life of Tay Gaming. Hey guys, it's Tay. How's everybody doing? I'm super excited about this, you guys. So let's kick this podcast off with a question for you, Tay. What are some of your favorite childhood games? I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> um, now I think back some serious memories, man. Um, I loved Mario Bros. Super, oh, Super Mario World 2, I believe. 2, hey? Yeah. See, that's an unpopular opinion because everyone loves uh, Super Mario World and Mario Bros. 3. 3, right? Yes, I don't know. It's just something about that game. It just brings back so much nostalgia for me. and I don't know. I feel like it was longer than 1, but a little bit shorter than 3. So, it's, I don't know. That's one of them. And Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars, is one of my favorite games. I'm with you there. I love that one. Yeah, I played that game and that got me into like the role-playing games in general and just like a Final Fantasy type battling style and collecting items and stuff. I never seen Mario in that way and it was just so much fun for me, you know? Uh, what I love about that game is Mario and Bowser teamed up and being a big fan of Bowser, seeing him on my team for once, it was unreal. It's like, what? Bowser's on my team? So yeah. that really appealed to me in that game. Gino was a cool character too, was, I think. Yeah. I don't, did he appear in any other Mario game? I thought? Uh, he had some cameos here and there in some games. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but he has made like very small cameos in other games. But that's definitely his main one. Yeah. So what about you? What, what was the first game that ever made you really love video games? Uh, um, honestly, it's this game called Snow Bros for NES. Um, my mom picked it up at a flea market one time and brought it home and you know, of course we had like the Mario Bros games and stuff, but I really, really wasn't like good at it. I was like four or five at the time and it was a little hard, but Snow Bros, super simple, super fun. And that single game, I think, kind of started my love for video games way back then. And um, I just want to say I'm super excited for the Switch port or remaster that's coming out. Cause Is it? I'm super excited for that, yeah. Oh, and it, so, I, to be honest, I never even played that game, man. Yeah, it, it's rare, right? And expensive, so mm -hmm. not a lot of people know it, but mm -hmm. that game uh, really just set me off on, on gaming so mm -hmm. so that was the one eh yeah what other games did you play around that uh you know i grew up with the nes um what did you grow up with playing like what was your earliest yeah, console yeah right? yeah it, nes was actually my first console was something called i think it was pico oh the sega pico sega pico yeah wow. it was like it was like purple and green and yellow yeah, i believe yeah. my mom brought that home and i was they had a little wand or whatever you could draw on and i thought it was the coolest thing i was like oh Pico. So that was actually like my first console or game I ever got introduced to. Um, after that, it was, it was NES, so I had um, Duck Hunt. So it would always be ding, 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 yeah. banging on the screen. And yeah, it was, it was just, yeah, Pico and NES is, but that was like the only memory I really have of NES. That and I think um, Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Which was super hard back in oh, the day. Yeah, so no kid beat that. Yeah, like no, like every time I was uh, just get to a certain a certain level, I just could never finish it. But I think I did as a kid. I can't remember. But well, do you know which Ninja Trolls it was? Was it the first one? Because they had two beat 'em up style ones, and then the first one was like side scrolling kind of. I think I think it was a I think it was beat 'em up. I think it was a beat 'em up beat 'em up style. Cause I remember there was one level when you're like on a trash can, like riding through the alleys, and you had to go up and down and. Yeah, yeah, it was hard. <laughs> well, I, I used to rent uh, the first two, and yeah, they were really hard games. Fun, but hard. <laughs> yeah, very hard. You know? I was just saying on the Pico, uh, that sounds like your next set to collect, maybe. Yeah. The Sega Pico. Yeah. Sega Pico set. Yeah. Did you it's have a small that? library. Uh, that's one console I don't have. Oh, man. Honestly, I don't think I ever play it. It's really child-friendly, like, but... Yeah, it's like a book, but... Yeah. An interactive book, but... It's, uh, it's technically a game console. Yeah. So, you know... I, I've seen some collectors actually get the full Pico set for some weird reason. But really? <laughs> yeah, that'd be kind of cool, I guess. Yeah, it was my, that was my first experience. Everyone in the house was like, Sega Pico. And then when I told them about it, they're like, what is that? Like, yeah. I didn't know what Atari was. 
until like adulthood to be honest yeah it was the pico and nes snes that was it for me well that's like even me i i'm a little older than you but mm. atari was like old to me when i was a kid hey, really? like i remember like my uncle or something had it but i never had one growing up so atari was out before nes yeah right? that was the late 70s early 80s yeah I see that was... and uh nes kind of was the resurgence in the late 80s yeah so i was out of, that yeah. was out of style and you know when i was yeah. right, he kicking me around <laughs> atari was uh i used to see atari games at flea markets and stuff too i just never mm. really played a whole lot to mm. my adulthood yeah so, but... so what so snowballs is that would, would that be considered like your favorite game of all time or? Uh, it's up there it, it's a really simple game and i love it to death um i'd say yeah it's in my top 10 for sure mm. not just because nostalgia it is a good game it's short i can beat that game in like i don't know less than an hour now mm, i even seen but... you you could be a lot of things now i seen you speed run through link to the past the other day too yeah man. it was i think around four hours yeah which was when i was a kid man that game took me forever <laughs> yeah me too and when i seen you doing it i was like i gotta relive that game but do I have the time? I can't do it before. And, and I'm not a speedrunner. I just played it from my knowledge and ran through it. So I was pretty impressed with my time, actually. Yeah. Considering I hadn't played in a couple of years and mm. just ran with it. You play it right here in this room, too? Right here on this old CRT right behind me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah That's so, sweet. Yeah. That is sweet. So what is... It? I don't know. So what game do you think would mean, like, the most to you? Um, yeah, see, that's, that's a tough one, too. Um... Obviously, Snow Bros is one, but uh, if you look up there, that's my favorite games of all time, that shelf. Mm. And, you know, there's a little bit of everything. There's some new stuff, like um, one of my most favorite recent games is Days Gone on PS4. I love that game. Mm -hmm. um, but then I love, like, Donkey Kong Country 2 on Super Nintendo, right? And you like, out of the three, you like two the best? 100%, man, I love two. But you like, one is great. But you don't like, get to play as Donkey Kong. Yeah, but you get Dixie, right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I guess they, they they do say Diddy was the faster, better playable yeah. character, I guess. Um, I don't know. Something about Dixie and Diddy. I, like, I love Diddy in the first one. I didn't really like Donkey Kong. It's so big and bulky. bulky. Yeah. I love Diddy's speed and agility. Mm -hmm. And then you get two characters like that. So I love two, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm guessing you like number one more. Yeah. So, one. Uh, one three is, is kind of... Uh, I don't think I played two and three. I think I played one. You haven't played two? Okay, no. you can show yourself out. Yeah. <laughs> I only played one, yeah. and then I went right into RPGs, like Zelda and then Final Fantasy oh, okay. 3, but I think it's really 6. Is yeah, that yeah, it it's 6. Like, yeah. 3 here. Yeah, but 3 here. So I went into that, and then I went to Pokemon, and I was, like, after Donkey Kong 1 and all those Link to the Past and stuff, I went to handhelds. Yeah. So, at 2 and 3, where I was a little bit, I think, teenage age. When, like, they didn't come out back-to-back -back like that. No, there was a bit of a gap. I think... Uh, two man, don't quote me here, guys. Mm -hmm. Uh, ninety four maybe. Mm -hmm. Like it was middle of the SNES is run, because I know three came out right near the end. But um, you definitely got to give two a play. It's hard though. Really? Um, but it's so great. Like that's another game I can just play through and have a blast with. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's for games that mean something to me. Kind of like Pokemon. I, I grew up with that in my you know adolescence years, like mm -hmm. you did, right? Yeah. Red, blue, yellow, the OGs, gold and silver. I was so hyped for gold and silver. Yeah, silver is right. with um. Is that with Cyndaquil as a starter? Yeah, yeah. Cyndaquil, oh, Chikorita, and uh, Totodile. Totodile. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I remember that. The hype behind those games, man. New Pokemon. Because I, I played the crap out of Red, blue, and yellow. Yeah, me too. I must have beat. I think Red is. The game I beat the most in my life. Yeah. I probably beat it like fifty times. Yeah. And missing go that cheat, you know, yeah. you used to do the and famous glitch. But Charizard other than Charizard, not Gen Gen two, Silver and all that stuff and like Lugia, Typhlosion, that was my favorite game. Yeah, I started so. with Syndicate too, oddly enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I had gold, so Yeah. Um yeah, no, it's awesome. Yeah, Pokemon is definitely it's still relevant. It's I think it's the only game I grew up with that's very relevant now and yeah. didn't go out of style, to be honest, it's would, I say, would you want to say more in style now? Or? Kid, every kid on this planet, it's like Mickey Mouse. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows Pokemon now, right? Yeah. Like, I actually went and picked up a, a package last week, and uh, my kid was wearing a Pokemon hat, and the, the little old lady there knew what Pokemon was, right? Mm -hmm. so, so, like, it's like Mickey Mouse. Everybody knows it, right? Yeah, my mom's mom knows Pokemon. So yeah. it's like, would you say it's the greatest franchise of all time? I think, um... Top for scenes? recent titles, I don't know. I haven't been the biggest fan of the recent titles, mm. um, other than Let's Go. But you like yeah. Let's Go? Uh, yeah, I thought it was a great remake. That's the game I wish we had when we were kids. Yeah, because it's actually blue, right? Yeah, Team Rocket. Yeah, that's it got that, me. that was a dream come true for childhood me. Right? Yeah, me too. And it's um, like 
I don't know. Like I just like I was letting you know the other day. I just completed Diamond, yeah. but it was so hard for me to get through it because I didn't have the nostalgia for it. Just like Team Rocket, and I like how their inlets go, so yeah. I could relate. It was like I was reliving watching the TV series. Right? Yeah. Um, I definitely say it's probably one of my favorite franchises, mm-hmm. but um, honestly, the recent entries, other than Arceus, um, I haven't really been into Sun and Moon, Sword and Shield, um, stuff like that. I, I I played them. I just they don't just sit with me. I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm old now, but <laughs> Sword um, was very easy too. I it feel was. Like. It's a cakewalk, and Sun and Moon literally tells you what's super effective, what's not. Yeah. It's like where's the challenge, man? And, yeah. Dude, I remember I was grinding like, oh, does this work on this? On that? Yeah. Work on that? You know, it's like yeah. So. It's a great series. My opinion, the last best ones were um, Soul Silver. I would say Black and White too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I never played those. Yeah, yeah, those are so, like so good. X and Y went, entered the 3D graphics, and like they're decent, but they're also easy. I really like the Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire remakes. They're Gen Three remakes. They're they're great. Mm-hmm. But for original Pokemon games, I think Black and White. Uh, Definitely the best last one, black and white too. Would you say Omega, um, Ruby, and Alpha Sapphire? You would you say Soul Silver and Heart Gold are better? Or oh, hundred percent. Really? In, in my order of Pokemon, I would go Heart Gold and Soul Silver first, then Black and White two, and then I'd probably go to the OGs Red and Blue. In my in my opinion, my professional Pokemon opinion. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, I um, guess. Well, like I don't know, I, like I love the OGs Red, Blue, and Yellow, but it, I can't find myself playing them right now. I'd have to go for like Let's Go and even Fire Red and Leaf Green, the remakes on GBA. They're definitely better, or just strictly nostalgia trip. That's yeah. all they are. They are tough to play. Yeah. Um, I did a charity stream a few years ago for MS, and I actually speed ran Red. How long? Um, it was what was it? Forty five minutes. But hold, hold on, that was with Dodrio mode on sta- uh, Pokemon Stadium, so it was all sped up times three. Oh. Okay, okay. So I was like flying through it, but. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was technically speed running. Mm-hmm. It's nostalgic, but it's definitely better ways to enjoy that Kanto region now. Yeah, let's go. Is it for me? I I I, I can't even revisit Fire Red. To be honest, like, I, it, it's I, tough to go back. Yeah, that's why I'm like I'm really hoping they'll do a, a Soul Silver or a Heart Re- Gold remake? remake for Switch. Yeah, if they didn't Let's Go style, that would be the ultimate top down thing top. for me man yeah that would be amazing to have those on the switch like a remaster or yeah something. lugia like that would definitely and that's the that's the game that you have you have to get go back to kanto region too yep. right and so it, same you thing get to fight silver. all the all the uh, gym leaders again you get to fight ash or red on, yeah. the, on mount silver yeah yeah definitely the best pokemon games in my opinion mm-hmm. it's gonna be hard to top those yeah it is um Uh, I want to quickly bring up um, renting games. Like, did you rent many games as a kid from like going over to a mom and pop rental store or oh, Blockbuster? Oh man, mine was Roger's Video and yeah, Blockbuster. Blockbuster was always do they all at the same time, yep. I believe. And I remember Roger's Video too. Yeah. Roger's Video was closer to where I lived, and man, that was my bread and butter because I grew up in a home with single mother, right? So. It was three kids and single mom, and it, she wasn't buying all those games. Anymore. She gave us everything we needed, but not everything we wanted, you know? Yeah, so it's, you, yeah. yeah, so it was like, um, for me, like playing Zelda and all these games, or PlayStation 1 games, because I was after, I don't know how your order went, but mine went NES, or Pico, NES, SNES, and then PlayStation 1. So when PlayStation 1 came out, I would have a few games, but... All the ones I wanted to play, I'd have to wait the week after they, the, when Roger's video had them out, and then I think he played like nine ninety nine or something. You get them for two days or three days, but then oh, you pay late charges, or you return it and then we rent it again. Right after, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we rent it right after, and that was cool, man. It was a cool experience. I just lived right down the street, so I just walked down there and you know picked up a little pick on the Max store. I don't even think Max. Is this anyway, no, it's it? all Circle K now. Yeah, yeah it's gone. It's... Another childhood thing gone. I right? know, man. No more rental stores, no more Max. Yeah. That guy, I think Netflix really ruined they, for the rental stores. They killed store. it, man. I actually remember when Netflix started up and they were, you'd have to like mail, the mail you the movie, the DVD, right? Yeah. And I was like, that's stupid. Like, I can just go to Blockbuster. Right? Yeah. Why am I going to wait in the mail? I want to watch a movie now. Yeah. And right? it, was, it was cool because, like, even if you had, like, a girlfriend a girlfriend back in the day or something, you'd be like, yo, on Friday, we're going to get the new movie. Dude, you yeah, know, yeah. watch popcorn or something. They had those little DVD players. I don't know if you had one of those. The portable DVD players. Oh, you probably have one, yeah. You put the DVD in and it pops open. Or a VHS player in and it pops open with the screen so you can just sit down on the step or at the yeah. parking. 
watching home movie or something. Yeah. Yeah, when you couldn't bring your girl home. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, exactly. You know, and you know. yeah, I like that going to just we used to have um pizza Fridays at home. My mom would be like, "Oh, what movie are we gonna get?" We all vote in the house, and those it, it was four of us, so three of us would win, right? If yeah. we voted on one thing and pick a movie, and then Friday we just hang out with the family and watch a movie. And me and my brother would get a new game, so we'd be up all night. To wait till my mom falls asleep and then off yeah. again. <laughs> uh, yeah, wait till she's in bed. Yeah, Man, you're a lot like me. Uh, I grew up a single single mom too, four kids, mm -hmm. three brothers and a sister. And mm -hmm. same thing, man. Like we didn't have a lot of games as a kid. Mm -hmm. Maybe that explains why I'm such a hoarder now. But <laughs> yeah, um, we'd get a couple bucks. And the place I went to was a little mom and pop one named Saz Video, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a weekly rental for any game. So I'd go and you know three or four bucks get a game for a week. Oh, and nice. Same kind of deal, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, just played the heck out of the game and honestly for me like sometimes the game you wanted was out so i'm like oh there's like these three games i gotta pick one i already came here right mm -hmm. and you rent some crap game you're stuck with it all weekend right but i still played it because you know spent the money but yeah one game i rented a lot was actually earthbound right. and um i'd rent it for the week get pretty far in it and i have to return it because their policy was you can't re-rent it right mm -hmm. i get it back the week after that and somebody erased my save data guess oh, what starting again oh, it's yeah. kind of a, a vicious cycle but Mm -hmm. I'd rent like uh, Mortal Kombat, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 on mm -hmm. Super Nintendo. Mm -hmm. That was uh, super cool. Yeah. Stuff like that. Have friends over too, sleepovers. Same thing. My mom would go to bed and me and my older brother would be sneaking out to the TV. <laughs> Get over here. Sometimes she'd come out and uh, she can hear the buzzing of the old CRT TV and she knows we're playing. Yeah. But, um, and yeah. Then, I love, love renting games. Then it snitches on you too when you click and you hear that ding. ding. Like when it's yeah. turning off, they're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Did, we did. did you ever beat Earthbound? Um, not as a kid, no. Um, I actually had a copy. Well, I think it was like grade six or seven. I traded a kid, uh, Double Dragon versus Battletoads, for his copy of Earthbound. Mm -hmm. And I finally owned it, and uh, I beat it that time. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, uh, I love that game. And I remember when I first saw Ness in Smash Bros. Nice. For 64, I'm like, wow, this is crazy. It's so funny because I actually don't even know. I didn't even know who that was. I haven't even played it to this day. I played it. I think they just released it on the Switch online. Store, yeah. it? So I just played it for a little bit. And I was like, oh, it's like an RPG. I did not know that. You know what I mean? And it's, I just always wonder who that guy was. On, 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 yeah, a lot of people Smash. were like, nobody knew. Earthbound really sold poorly. Mm -hmm. RPGs weren't big in... North America, right? There's more so, beat em ups and action games, platformers. Yeah, platformers. Um, but for me, uh, Mario RPG and Earthbound were my two introductions to RPGs, yeah. right? And uh, being a young kid, like six, seven years old, they're, they're tough, right? I can barely read, let alone <laughs> figure out what to do. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun renting games um, mm -hmm. for kids like us, right? We didn't have a whole lot. So. Yeah, I feel like this generation nowadays not having as much fun because just going outside more to get those games and those experiences they'll never know what a blockbuster was or watch a video unless they get the games that have the little tags they're yeah. like oh, what was this movie store like you guys used to rent movies in stores oh, like, yeah you couldn't just download it or stream it right? yeah yeah they don't get the, the struggle right and yeah especially like i was saying where you rent a game that sucks right yeah like, well i'm stuck with it like i rented this game sim earth oh uh it's it's up there on the wall oh okay it's like sim city but 10 times worse oh. uh, when i rented that man i had it for a week i'm like this is awful you basically create a planet try to like build bacteria really? and like create life like it's it's educational mm. but it's boring <laughs> but the, th the cool thing about it is that when you rent the game you're getting it for a couple of days for a week you're just renting anything that's new or whatever mm. i didn't really have a genre of game i liked then because so you just renting new things and you're playing with it and you're like, wow, this is actually pretty cool. Yeah. I like this. This is a style game I can get into. Or this one's junk. I'm not going to rent it again. So you're kind of finding out what kind of genre you really love. Love. Has yeah. that changed a lot nowadays? Oh, yeah. Like my older kid, he'll just YouTube a review and be like, this game sucks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, man, you don't know the struggle of renting a garbage game in or even like renting a hidden gem like Pocky and Rocky. Mm -hmm. I rented that once and there was nothing else so I'm like, oh, i guess i'm renting this game mm -hmm. i looked at the box and you judge games what the cover looked like in the box back in the day right mm -hmm. and when i rented pocky and rocky i was like this game is awesome so it goes both ways you get a crappy game sometimes you get a super awesome game is that you, you, it's a it's like a a running gun kind of shooter almost like it's a really unique game but instead of like in a ship you're on, on the ground you're throwing cards you never played it i guess right no you have one and two i can see yeah so. they're uh they're super good um mm -hmm. 
But again, yeah, you find games and genres you never would have normally played, like even Earthbound. I never played an RPG before Earthbound, but renting it, right, out of desperation taught me, I, oh, this is awesome, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And like today, like I said, you could just YouTube a, a review and be like, yeah. They have it but, so much easier than us, man. They, yeah. they, what's a strategy guide nowadays, right? I'm out making right? sure I was like Final Fantasy VII. I was so flustered because I was young playing those, right? And I was so flustered. I was like, oh, I had to buy a strategy guide for, I don't know what it was then, maybe $12 or something. You get yeah, a little flustered. Yes. Yeah. Now they're worth a lot more, but now you just Google how to do this and it's on YouTube or we didn't have all those nope, it was search engines. Guide. Yeah. I used to walk over to like Max or 7 Eleven on my lunch break. At school, and we do the and we, like look at cheat codes <laughs> yeah. on Mortal Kombat or or what to do in this. Cause, yeah. Like for Earthbound, it, uh, there's this part where you need this pencil eraser. I won't try to explain it to you, but if mm. you know Earthbound, you'll know what I'm talking about. I was stuck on this thing for like months after I owned the game. I could not figure out what to do. I there was no internet, mm -hmm. right? So what do you do? And Earthbound's guide is extremely rare, mm -hmm. so I just was stuck. Mm -hmm. You could ask kids at school. They're like, "What's Earthbound?" <laughs> right? So. <laughs> But some games, like, yeah, um, at the playground, right? Like, okay. hey, did you get this part in this game? And, like, that was our way to figure out what to do with kids or books. Word like, of mouth, yeah. Yeah, you never, you couldn't just look it up. Right? Yeah. So, the struggle <laughs> was real back then. Yeah, to get through that. I think people that play a game in those generations can grind through these games nowadays. Those are the ones, we are the ones playing those type of games, I believe, yeah. too. Most people just want an easy, you know, relaxing yeah. game nowadays, but... Funny story for her, my older boy, I actually offered him 50 bucks to beat A Link to the Past. And uh, all summer, I said, you beat A Link to the Past this summer with no help, I'll give you 50 bucks. He got to, like, in the dungeon where you fall down and get the sword, mm -hmm. and in that little place to save Zelda, like, he didn't know what to do, he gave up. Like, it's 50 bucks, man, you don't want $50? It's too hard. <laughs> so, so, kids, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. That's, that brings me, know, that brings me for another question. What is it like being a gamer dad, man? Like, oh, yeah, it's, uh... <laughs> It's weird because I got two kids. My younger kid, like, he'll come down here and play Mario Bros. 3 with me all day long. Mm -hmm. uh, my older boy, I don't know. I guess you can't force your kids into stuff, but he doesn't really like retro games. He's cool, like GameCube era, mm -hmm. PS2. Like, we'll play Marvel vs. Capcom, but he doesn't like the old, old stuff. Like NES, SNES? Yeah, and, and like, having a dad like me is obviously, yeah. you're well-versed in video games, but um, yeah. it, it's cool because I can share the stuff that I loved as a kid with, with my kids, whether they like it or not. Do you find, um, like, do you find they like it? They like some of the same stuff? Not really? No. Like, my older boy, he loves Pokemon like I do, so we play Pokemon together and stuff. It, mm -hmm. It's awesome, right? My younger kid, he's not afraid. He will, he'll go, like, uh, horns first and right into Mega Man 2, right? Yeah. He's, he's six, right? Yeah. So, um, it's kind of hit and miss, but for the most part, they both really love well, you gaming, love right? Yeah. So, it's awesome. Um, yeah, well, like, you have a young kid, right? Yeah. Like, she's not quite there yet, but... Yeah, um, but it's crazy it's when you fun. say that, because six, at six, man, I was I was beating a lot of these games, man. Like, even if I'm looking up on here right now, like, Zelda, Ages, and Seasons, those games are really hard now. Yeah. Nowadays, you play them, go back to them, but if you let me remember what to do, it's yeah. like, those are difficult games. Like, kids are just rapping nowadays. It's yeah. like, man, maybe it, it may be because we had more time just to constantly just be grinding on them, right? Yeah. trying this trying that but i feel like i can't beat those certain games nowadays i don't know about you no i agree like some of these older games like i i thought like these games were um harder like now than when i was a kid it's like i'm older i'm smarter i should be able to beat this right yeah. what's wrong with me <laughs> um but i think a big problem of today's games too is kids have so many options now when we were kids we had like two three options crash bandicoot Tyro, right? mario like. and you had a game you play it like mm -hmm. i remember in like when in n64 came out i just run around mario 64 goofing around exploring because i only had two 64 games right? yeah like tetris and that mm -hmm. so you just spend more time in games like my older kid he'll be the game and it's in the shelf and done he'll on, on to the next thing right yeah. me i'd be the game i'm going through just having fun right mm -hmm. yeah um, the replay value was way better back then i think now it's just know. like yeah i wrapped it on to the next one like yeah. and that's <laughs> for some initiative to keep going like mm -hmm. trophies or, or bonus stuff DLCs, dlc yeah, post game stuff yeah but um i don't know then again like um my youngest kid there he uh he almost beat uh what game was it um, Majora's Mask. I had him fight the end boss on Majora's Mask, and mm -hmm. he beat it. And he's six. Like I don't think I could have did that when I was six. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, kids are a little more resilient, I guess. Too mm -hmm. just depends on the kid. Um, yeah, you gotta introduce them to it and see what they like. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So you have such a great collection, man. It's like, do you ever feel like, do you ever make a plan to like get through your backlog? Well, you have a big backlog? I, I think, oh, I think we all have big backlogs, right? Yeah. And I think the problem we all suffer with is time. Time, yeah, especially parents like us, like, mm. you know, you work full time, you got kids. Mm. Honestly, man, I get an hour or two a day if I'm lucky to do anything, whether it's working on YouTube or just playing a game, right? Mm. Uh, time is definitely tough. Um, yeah. I obviously, I want to play everything at one point. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, and then you know that feeling where it's like, oh, it's been two weeks, I haven't gotten a game, you get that itch, right? Yeah. Like, I gotta pick something up. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, yeah, I definitely feel that. Um, uh, one big struggle I have is when I actually have time to dedicate to play a game, it's like, I walk around here, I'm like, what do I play, right? Do I want something new? Do I want something old? Do I want a handheld, mm-hmm. right? Do I want to play VR? Like, just choices, right? And I think that's a problem with even us. There's so many options out there. Um, when we were kids, we had just a handful of games at a uh, rental store to pick from, so it's mm-hmm. easier to decide, right? Yeah, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. It's the, the time for everything, right? And yeah. it's like, just like you said, if you have an hour or two allotted for yourself, it's like, I have so many other things I want to do as well. I want to game. I want to try to keep up my fitness now because, yeah. you know, not where I was before. So I'm trying to, you know, be healthy, maybe lift weights here. So I'm like, should I exercise? Should I film for YouTube? Should I game hunt, you know, or should I play a game? So I've been playing lots of stuff on the Switch when I have time because it's portable, right? So if I'm not doing anything, I can play it anywhere. So I feel like I have a better chance of getting through those games. But yeah, man, it's time man adult responsibilities you know i think what appeals to me to me the most now and why i still love retro stuff is because you can pick up a retro game or even some switch games and just plop on the couch play it for an hour or so and put it away Mm -hmm. like i personally don't have time to sink into a 200 hour rpg yeah right especially like looking at some old ps1 or ps2 rpgs like man i don't got time to sit in front of the couch that long is that like wild arms and stuff like stuff like that yeah even now even like um the switch games like um xenoblade i was gonna say xenoblade i heard it's like 100 hour game yeah i picked that up and i played a little bit of it but it's just such a time consuming game man so much dialogue too yeah and honestly, now if a game doesn't hook me within the first couple hours, I, I have to shelf it because yeah. I could be playing something I'm enjoying. Yeah. At this point in life, with this kind of collection, I want to play games I enjoy. I don't yeah. want to force myself to, to game get I'm not enjoying, right? Yeah, Octopath Traveler. Um, what was the other one that just came out? It was just like that. It was um, Triangle Strategy? Or yeah, that's the Enix? newest one. Yeah. yeah, I heard they're both like 50-hour games. I was getting into Octopath Traveler a lot, and it was pretty good. It had cool like voice actors and stuff. It's just like so long, and it, like you said, it didn't grab me yeah how the way i want to grab a lot of people are gonna probably hate on me for saying that but i mean like breath of the wild i can't get into it <laughs> See, that's crazy when breath of the wild came out i was like i don't got time for this and i actually just picked it up and played for a bit and it grabbed me so here i am 200 hours into this thing i'm like man i feel bad for all my other games because i've been on breath of the wild for two weeks so you love it i love breath of the wild it was just fantastic i did exactly what you did man i played it for an hour or so and shelved it i it was my first game on the switch and with one two switch and i think mario kart yeah. that's just what everyone was hyping you yeah. know i was like oh the graphics are really good on this zelda game but i'm used to like streamline linear zelda do this do that do that yeah. i'm not really into the open world as much but it's definitely a game i have to get off my list man i gotta beat it so you saying it was worth it absolutely um on that same topic um the game days gone i was talking about for ps4 it's one of my favorite ps4 games ever mm-hmm. i got that at launch I played for about two hours and I shelved it because it wasn't grab- grabbing me, right? Mm-hmm. But then I went back to it. I got really sick for about three weeks mm-hmm. and I'm like, I'm going to play something, right? Mm-hmm. And I ended up playing Days Gone and the second time picking it back up, it grabbed me. I, I gave it a chance and got into it about 10 hours in. All of a sudden it opened up and I was like, this is the greatest game I've ever played. What was it called? So, Days Gone? Days Gone. So, um, Check it out. <laughs> if, uh, sometimes the game doesn't get you at the first hook, maybe you just got to take a break, right? Um, my problem at that time was I'd just beaten like three other zombie games right before Days Gone, mm-hmm. like Last of Us, State of Decay, and Dying Light, all kind of in a row. So I was kind of like on burnout of zombies, right? Mm-hmm. And I love zombie games. Mm-hmm. Days Gone, I just was finished. I, I just couldn't do it. But my second time picking it up, it really hooked me, and now it's my favorite PS4 game. So oh, really? On the flip side, I put games away and picked them back up, and I still don't like them. So <laughs> Yeah, so it's hit uh, or miss type it, of thing? Yeah, it's really it's just hit or miss. I, I wouldn't say write a game off um, right away, but... Again, if it's not hooking you, maybe just put it on the shelf for a while, and maybe one day Breath of the Wild will will get you, right? Yeah, I, I'm like I'm glad they postponed this one, number two. Cause I want to definitely get through number one before that happens. So it's yeah. like Breath of the Wild. 
Oh, it's an open world game, but there's things in it that are so amazing. Like, I don't know if you know, but you can get like different costumes, like Pierce Divey or Dark Link or the Wind Waker costume for Ocarina of Time. Mm -hmm. Like, all you can get the big Goron sword weapon from Ocarina of Time. You get Majora's Mask in it. Like, there's so many things about Zelda that are in this game that are just it's a, amazing. A Zelda fanboy game, basically. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I, I agree too that some game, open world games, like, they're so big and massive, it's just. Oh, you can't, uh, you can't I like, get into it. I like, I don't know what you would call it, semi-open world. So I like it where you could do, if you choose to go this path, you, you can, but it does give you the what to do. Because I heard, like, Breath of the Wild, you can finish it. And now if you really want to go to the boss. You can go right to Ganon. Yeah. yeah so, you get your butt kicked. But. Yeah. <laughs> well, some people beat him. Yeah, I know. So I've seen some speedrunners doing it in like 45 minutes. Like, wow, man. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. It's like, is that would that be your favorite Zelda of all time? No, no, no. Um, Honestly, A Link to the Past. Uh, Nostalgic reasons. And I just love it, honestly. Um, have, have you played A Link Between Worlds? On uh, 3DS? Yes. Um, I did play it. Um, I never beat it. That's one of those games too that I played and it just wasn't hooking me. Oh. And I shelved and I haven't made my way back. But mm -hmm. I heard it's a lot like a Link to the Past. Mm -hmm. um, Four Swords on GameCube actually is very similar to a Link to the Past, and I love that game. But it's more of a multiplayer game. Mm -hmm. We um, got to do that one day. Oh, dude, it's fun. Well, well, what's your uh, favorite Zelda game? Uh, if you have mine's one. probably Ocarina of Time. Yeah, it's the popular choice. That'd be my number two. Epona uh, song. <laughs> Like, yeah, I love Zelda, man. I remember uh, the very first time I played Ogre Time when you come out of the, the Kokori, or Kokori, wherever you yeah, say it, Kokuri. forest. Yeah. I get slaughtered because I say it bad. <laughs> um, when you walk out into the Hyrule Fields for the first time, past that owl, it's just, just whoa, yeah. look at this world. Because I'm coming off like Super Nintendo, right? Yeah, you're like... <laughs> into that, it was just mind-blowing at the time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that game really... For what it was. Honestly, that's probably one of the greatest games in gaming history for anybody. It's, yeah. just, it's such a important game in history mm -hmm. um but yeah that's a, a super good one yeah i never hear anybody say they didn't like that game to be honest yeah i'm like <laughs> honestly yeah who doesn't like over in a time yeah right? it's, it's such a great game do you ever do you ever feel like you have a, a limit because your collection is massive mine's getting up there now too but you ever feel like you have a limit and you'd be like you know what this is enough for my collection <laughs> um you know what dude i struggle with that all the time like i get some pickups and like i recently got this like massive xbox 360 and ps3 bundle with like over 100 games and like my drawers are busting at the seams now yeah. it's like you know what man do i really need all these games like mm -hmm. so yeah there's definitely limits like even you're here now you look around like it's it's pretty tight there ain't a whole <laughs> lot of room for anything else right yeah. um i've worked really hard uh, tetris has taught me a lot about how to build a game room i can see you that. can just get these things in here like I'm borderline getting a little hoarder, hoarder ish right here, right? <laughs> you can still move around, but um, I don't know. I just love this stuff. It's, I don't know. I just like walking around, look around. Like, I'm sure you look at your stuff and you're like, dang, this is cool. And I remember this, I remember that. See, right? if I'm being honest, I'm probably doing that more than playing nowadays. Like, sometimes, right? like, you know what? I'm going to go in a game room with you an hour or two in this game, finish Final Fantasy VII Remake Finals. Yeah. And then I come in a game room and just be. Hmm. I'm looking around like this is nice, man. This is a hard way to see. You know, I love this. It's just so much passion behind it, right? I can see you have passion for it. Absolutely, yeah. And it's just like I'm looking at it. It's like, wow! I really didn't even turn on the TV. I was just kind of just like playing things. They was thinking, oh, this move here, organizing, dusting, cleaning, right? Yeah, yeah. You know the struggle, man. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely, yeah. And sometimes just you look around and you just admire what you build. Sometimes the collecting part is funner than the game, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, one thing, though, my, my spouse is super understanding, but sometimes she'll say things like, no more TVs, or no more kiosks. I've gotten that a few times, <laughs> yeah. because, you know, room room does get tight, and like even you were saying, your room's starting to, yeah, it's starting starting to get pretty full, right? When yeah. stuff starts showing up on the floor, yeah. and you got nowhere to put it, it's like, hmm, either i got to expand or <laughs> reorganize. Mm -hmm. you know? It's always probably the reorganizing thing. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's, yeah, even so, since I did my game room tour, I've, I've changed this place around a little bit, just because you got to make some room right you think you ever do an up-to-date one i think eventually uh i've noticed with game room tours people do them every year yeah. and honestly like it's almost the same as last year except a couple of new games right like it depends on who but a lot of the bigger guys i see like unless they change houses or got some real significant Looks changes same. yeah it's all it's barely wa worth watching to me in my opinion right i love watching game room tours but i like to see different things right yeah but i feel like like i should 
probably do a game tour one of these days. I did one, like, I started, like, really collecting maybe in 2020 because I always got, you know, that GameStop or whatever, wherever you guys are, EV Games. I always hit that, that um, you know, buy three, tra bring in, trade in three, get one free or whatever. I always did that, so I got rid of a lot of my good stuff. And now I'm really collecting. And I was looking at my old pictures and videos. And I'm like, now this room looks really empty. The shelves were really empty. And now it's like, wow, everything's packed up and jammed. Like, the, the progression that you make in a year when you're really collecting and holding on to things and trying to build a game room or a collection that you like is insane. And I enjoyed your gaming video. I think you should do one. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, some things have changed. Like, I got my big PlayStation shelf. And one of the TVs that I had in the gaming tour blew up. So I had to put another one in. So I've done a few changes. Mm -hmm. um, but when I filmed my game room, I wanted to wait. Like, I had a GameCube kiosk coming, my second one. I had, like, my Bowser figure, my big one. So mm -hmm. I wanted to film it when it's not going to change for a while. And I've done some changes, but, you know, maybe another year I might do one, mm -hmm. you know? So You think you're going to make bigger changes, more changes? No, I'm pretty happy with the layout, honestly. Unless something breaks, or if I get a really cool kiosk, like I secretly want an Xbox 360 kiosk that yeah. my wife doesn't know yet, but yeah. <laughs> I would make room for that. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm really content. Like you, we're talking about when you know, like you have enough, right? And I'm at the point now where I'm happy with everything I have. I still like little pickups here and there, but mm -hmm. as for the overall layout, I'm, I'm pretty content. Yeah, I think the layout is very precise, you know, the way you have things laid out doesn't look random it just looks like everything makes sense everything's kind of organized yeah the pokemon to presented the pokemon. well yeah it's presented well I, you know it feels i feel like, like yeah i appreciate that because mm -hmm. i know i've had some gaming tours i watch and like i'll see like nes and genesis and nest or snes games just shoved on one little shelf all bundled together i'm like oh well it, it just doesn't look appealing to me i like like it to be appealing and almost tell a story right yeah it doesn't even it's no way everything is too right? I, yeah and yeah i hate looking for things right it's mm. like i know my genesis stuff's here i know my nest is here my, my turbo graphics over here switch is there like i know where everything is right mm. um there's some youtubers i see and they just got like those uh, ikea shelves in the background and it's just jam full of games and random <laughs> stuff right it yeah just doesn't look appealing to me mm. um, i just like the, the presentation is important to me mm. I have like you desk too, <laughs> but uh, well, well, but my thing is, my thing is, I have them categorized though. So well, yeah, um, I have my switches here. Oh, and Nintendo is just Nintendo, you know. And yeah. then Sony's there. I don't have a space for the Xbox. Don't hate on me for that, but no. I mean, like, I have a little. I'm I'm building it. I'm building it. Yeah, you're still growing, right? Like yeah, me, I'm at, I'm at my pe my peak, but uh, don't get me wrong. Those IKEA bookshelves, like these ones, they're, that's IKEA. Yeah, when they're organized, I think they work really well. Mm -hmm. um, it's just when they're just full of stuff, right? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, I rammed it everywhere. Yeah, I think it's an episode of Hoarders I'm watching instead of a game room tour. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. So, yeah, but um, yeah, I like your little setup. It's coming along nice. Like your little shoe in the corner. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I see all the time. You got everything, all your handhelds laid out nice. And yeah. I'm, I still look in there. I'm like, oh, I know that. And, <laughs> so, yeah, it's growing work. Good. Yeah. I think you should do a, a tour because I look back at my first tour from like 2016 or something, mm -hmm. and like my very first house when I started YouTube, and like it's awful. There's so much space and like just barely anything, and I'm like super ghetto. And I, I know I, I should have did one at the beginning of the year, to be honest, because the way it's grown so much in the year, I don't know how much, unless I move or something. You know, I mean, just like you said. So before the shelves were empty and barely had anything, but now it's, it's starting to pick up, which so I'm happy right. about. Yeah, yeah, it's nice, like you said, to see what was to now, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe you should do one, and maybe in a year from now, it'll even be more, right? Yeah, <laughs> I don't think the wife would like that, but uh, <laughs> and under understanding spouse is definitely important yeah. in this hobby. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to talk about uh, like pre-ordering and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, my older kid pre-ordered Splatoon 3 and they're like, yeah, there's no pre-order bonus. But I remember when I pre-ordered back in like Gen 6 with like GameCube, PS2 and stuff, like I was getting shirts and like, uh, even a good example is um, GameCube. You pre-ordered Wind Waker and you got this Zelda Collector's Edition game, mm -hmm. right? Like they had some cool stuff. You're cheaping out on us now. And now like you get like a, a download code for a costume or a gun, right? It's like... Yeah, like that's not a pre-order. Where's my shirt, man? Yeah. yeah my, <laughs> Socks. Some, right? Yeah. Right. Sometimes you get like a poster, like on RCS you get the poster, but mm -hmm. certain Switch games, but pre-ordering just... There's no uh, incentive. no incentive, right, anymore, I feel like. Yeah. And only certain stores get it. Like everyone, if there was a pre-order, everybody would have it. And yeah. I was like, oh, this GameStop, oh, we don't have it here, but it's only this one that has it there. And I just stickers yeah. or something you know so. yeah 
like um, Nintendo's still pretty good in some aspects. Like I know when I pre-ordered Mario 3D World for my kids on Switch, we got a little cool coin. Mm -hmm. But again, um, just like I remember, oh, yeah, the I got that too, the gold coin. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just remember the GameCube era was so great. Like I pre-ordered Metro Prime, and I got this cool Metro Prime shirt, mm -hmm. and like such cool pre-order stuff back then. I just wanted to touch base. Like, did you ever get any cool pre-orders back in the day? Uh, back in the day. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure if I can remember. To be honest, like the GameCube era, I took. Uh, I, I think I was just getting into sports, mm -hmm. so I feel like I I had a GameCube. So I had Wind Waker. I had Double Dash, Smash Bros, and I think that was really like what we ran. Like the whole bunch of the boys would get together at lunchtime, and you know, oh, I'm the Smash Champion of the Week. Oh, yeah. you owe me lunch or stuff like that. So I'd be doing that. But pre-order bonus, I can't really remember if I. I feel like all my memories of pre-order bonuses like, like 2000, 2012. Yeah, what was the coolest pre-order bonus you got? Um, was it the well, honestly? They're all GameCube. Um, the the Wind Waker uh, bonus disc was awesome because that disc you had Zelda one and two, Ocarina of Time, and Majora's Mask, plus a playable demo of Wind Waker, and oh. that was one of my my favorites. And Mario Sunshine, they actually gave you this water gun. Really? Yeah. That would have been super sweet. cool, and I actually yeah. gave it away to my friend Chris years ago, like an idiot, <laughs> before I was really like hardcore into GameCube. Like, Didn't you just get a collector's edition too? You pick one in, the, in the last lot, yeah. Spoiler oh. alert! I'm oh, sure so. that that video won't be up yet by oh, the time yeah. we post this, oh. but right. that's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got I just got another collector's edition um, yeah. in the lot, so mm -hmm. yeah, that's a really cool pre-order bonus in my opinion. But yeah, that's one of my favorites for sure. Yeah. Is that a was that two discs or is one? It's a single disc with all those on with it. all those on them. Yeah. Sweet. So yeah, pre-orders just yeah were super cool back then. Now yeah, I just feel like they're not what they used to be. Yeah. Um, speaking of pre-order, I had another topic kind of I want to discuss. Um, what were some of your most hyped games ever? You know that that you know, you know that game's coming. You're like building that hype, and you're like I can't wait to get my hands on that. Uh, mine was probably Final Fantasy X. Was was one of them because Final Fantasy VII. I'm just so used to that style of graphics, and now the the PS4 is out, and or yeah, PS2, PS2 yeah. is out. I'm jumping ahead, Eris, yeah. but PS2 is out now, and there's a new Final Fantasy. I remember the graphics, what they did with it, and just I feel like it was a big jump. Well, dude, yeah, you look at nine to ten. And it's two different, it's like a different planet. Yeah. Like, like, whoa, I remember seeing those cutscenes, like, especially that in the water when Nina yeah, and uh, yeah. Titus T were... Yeah, Titus. Titus, yeah, see, there I am. So <laughs> his name too. When I seen those two in the water and they're having that little, like, love scene there. Yeah, and they got like, is this real life? Like, is this a movie? Yeah. yeah. This is the game? Like, I remember seeing that too and like, wow. Well, I was like, this is going to be so hype when I was watching those trailers and I was just so mad because I love Final Fantasy Seven. It's probably my favorite. That's probably my fun, favorite Final Fantasy because Cloud, you know. Yeah, Cloud. Yeah. Oh man, I'm working on a video last night. Yeah, do you know the the game Air Gaze for PS One? You okay. call yourself a Cloud fan. Uh, cloud is in that game. Really? It's a it's a semi two point five D fighting game, and Cloud and Tifa and Sephiroth are special guests in it. Really? It's super cool. You gotta show me I'm that. featuring on my next uh, games to get episode, but yeah, yeah cool. Cloud's in that game. Um, I rented that with a, a friend when we were kids, and like. The heck, Cloud is in this? What was it called? Air, Air Gaze. It's like E H G I Z. I'll show you when we're done the podcast. Yeah, uh, yeah you're putting me on, man. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, just just bugging me a little bit, yeah. but it's uh, yeah, it's Cloud. I don't know if you know, but there's actually a Final Fantasy VII remake for the NES too that I have. Really? It's based in like Final Fantasy One graphics, but it's Final Fantasy VII. Um, yeah, an eight bit Final Fantasy VII. I think I've actually probably might have heard of that one. Yeah, um, I picked it up at the Hillhurst. Uh, Really? Swap me or uh, uh, flea market one time. Nice. James Wasden actually shout out to him. He he hooked me up with a copy. Really? It's a Final Fantasy VII eight bit NES game. And it's actually pretty cool. Really? You gotta show me. Yeah, those yeah, two games so and that and air gaze. You gotta show me. You're a big Final Fantasy VII fan, so yeah, definitely had to. It was called Demake. Um, it's the Final Fantasy VII Demake. That's what I call it, I guess. Oh. Um, it's eight bit Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. So it's yeah, different. Yeah, sweet. A different way to play Final Fantasy VII, yeah. but. Yeah, anyway, um... Same kind of story, similar? Or? It's the exact same thing. You, you, you know, right at the beginning, you're in that, like, train station or whatever. Really? Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. When I was playing through, I'm like, this is so weird. Really? It's like an NES Final Fantasy VII. Like, yeah, same story, everything, man. Was it... And it's not, like, a repro-made game, right? It, it is a repro. Oh, okay. It's like someone... It's almost like a ROM hack, I guess. Yeah, yeah. 
done, but it's still well done. So yeah, that's seen by a lot. Air Gaze is an official release from PlayStation Squaresoft. So mm. or Square, I, yeah, Squaresoft. Now that he's saying it's sounding a little bit more familiar. He can pull the blade out and everything. And hit people. He's so broken in that game. Yeah. Man, I cheese. I played last night. I was cheesing the enemies <laughs> like crazy, just whipping their butts with the Buster Sword. Yeah, yeah. man. That's that's what's iconic, man. Yeah. I feel like Cloud really set it off for RPGs and like. That type of character, like he's very relevant now. When they're adding him into Smash Bros. Dude, I was gonna say, I'm talking about hype. When when I saw that trailer in Smash Four for Cloud, I'm like, <sighs> rub my face like, I'm hello. Am I awake? Yeah. Cloud is in Smash Brothers. What is what planet are we on, man? Yeah, everyone's getting hyped for Sora, but I was like, Cloud. I was like, wow. Cloud was a huge hype character, man. Like, yeah. and they took everyone by surprise. If you didn't hear about the leaks, like I didn't know any leaks, and I just saw it. Yeah. Like like I remember playing melee with my my kid my uh, friends in junior high, mm-hmm. and we all love Final Fantasy. And this one kid, um, he's like, "Oh, it'd be so cool if Cloud was in Smash." I'm like that'll never happen, man. <laughs> Get that crap out of your head. That'll never happen. Yeah, yeah, right. right. And then we lost touch over the years. But I just imagine when he saw Cloud in Smash, he's just like, "Wow." Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> so, yeah, Cloud's a very iconic character. I, I mm-hmm. feel for sure. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I uh, just want to talk about one of my hyped games too. Um, mm-hmm. You're a big Pokemon fan. When they announced Pokemon Stadium 1, and I saw that, like, you missed 64, right? So I guess you don't understand the hype Oh, no, that brought back memories, but I'll go after um, you say it, yeah. <laughs> I've seen the commercial for Stadium, and, like, that was probably one of my most hyped games, because my Pokemon and, like, crappy 2D pixels coming on the big screen in 3D, that was just, like, I'd be like, is it here yet? Is it here yet? Come on, counting the days of school. Like, remember that Friday when it was coming up? I'm like, oh, Pokemon Stadium this weekend. Like, mom, please, for my birthday. Like, that was actually really That hyped. was a super hype, super hype game for me, uh, Stadium 1. And then you could transfer your Pokemon over yep. onto oh, the team. Wow. Like, yeah. I still remember just the excitement of that game and finally having it in my hands and getting in there and playing it. Just, yeah, I was super hyped for Stadium 1. That big exact memories now. Like, the GameCube era, that's another game I had. Pokemon Coliseum. Coliseum yeah. So Coliseum was amped for me because it was like seeing them and now and the nice picture, right? So Stadium because it, Stadium was like that was a game that we ran all the time too. Well, beat this guy with his Pokemon and yeah. I had my Pokemon. That, so did you raise a better you know team? Yeah. And yeah. it was cool to see that, but Coliseum was like the RPG, and I was like, wow, that game was a lot of fun going. Oh, I agree. Like, Coliseum, um, it was a short RPG, yeah. but that's the first console Pokemon traditional-ish game we ever got, right? Mm-hmm. It was Coliseum. So when XD came out, it was more of a full-fledged yeah. game, right? And yeah. it's like, wow, a console, consoleized Pokemon game, right? It was really cool. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. Those games are still great now, I think. Yeah. I played them on the HD. Oh, yeah, man. beautiful. I'm going to have to run through one of those again. Right? <laughs> I don't know if you know, but Pokemon Battle Revolution on Wii is the stadium and coliseum of the Wii. You can take Heart Gold and Soul Silver and Diamond and Pearl and play them on the Wii through there. Oh. Connect your DSs through the wireless connectivity. Mm. And like that's super fun taking your team from Heart Gold and Soul Silver and playing on, on the Wii and it's just like Stadium and Coliseum, you get to battle through different leagues and cups and stuff like that. So oh. not a lot of people know that actually. But uh yeah. I did Heart Gold and Soul Silver? Are compatible. Same with uh Diamond and Pearl and I believe Platinum. Yeah. yeah, that's a Wii. That's the one that's upstairs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I think I have that game too. Pokemon Battle Revolution. Yeah, yeah. It's, you can do, use like the rental Pokemon or connect your DS and play with your own. Well, so it's like Pokemon Stadium. It's like Stadium and Coliseum. Yeah. I gotta so, throw that on. I was wondering why it was going up in price too. Yeah. <laughs> people, uh, yeah, people don't know that, but I used to play it all the time, especially with my older boy. When mm-hmm. we do playthroughs of Heart Gold and Soul Silver together, mm-hmm. we'll do our battles through Battle Revolution. So yeah, sweet. And then and the DS connects to it pretty easily. Wirelessly, yeah. So yeah, it's uh, the modern, the most modern stadium I guess we got because now everything is just right on Switch. Right? You think they'll ever remake that? They should remake Stadium or Coliseum. Or I, I think like it'd be cool if they did, but really, what's the point? Because now the point of those games were the graphics were so nice. Like, yeah. Get off the handheld to That's a modern cool. console at the time, mm-hmm. right? Now games just look good all together. Pokemon games, right? So yeah. I, I don't know if they ever would. You and think Battle Revolution looks it looks good? Oh yeah, it's it? awesome. It's oh, Wii graphics, but okay. um, yeah, it's definitely no Switch. But mm-hmm. yeah, I think it looks awesome. Right? It's the best way to play Heart Gold and Soul Silver battles, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So you get that fully animated characters, right? And mm-hmm. there's double battles in that and stuff. So that's really fun. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I definitely think uh, it's worth. I'm gonna build a it. team and we should we shall battle. We shall. <laughs> I have a, a good team still on my OG Heart Gold cart, so mm-hmm. I'm ready already. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, another thing I just want to talk about really quick, 
was what are some of like the games you played as a kid like at a friend's house or or stuff like that that you never actually owned like i know a lot of us on um, our our group age would go to a friend's house or a cousin's house or somewhere right and, and play some games i don't think there's just any memorable games that you played that you never owned right right off the bat was um I only want me playing all these violent games, Mortal Kombat and all that stuff. So yeah. I go there, and get over here, rip people's heads off, you know. <laughs> and um, James Bond, 007, Goldeneye. Oh, that was like, yo, we're linking up on the weekend and we're doing this. And yeah. I remember playing that little. There was a level when you can open the door and you're like in this like, I don't know if in this cave or you're underground somewhere, but you can just go. And I remember that level. My sister, even my sister, liked that game. You know, <laughs> like she Everybody bought a 64 likes. pretty recently just to relive that with their husband yeah. and they'd be playing the N64 just 007 that's the only game they have on there yeah. <laughs> and just doo -doo 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 -doo. and you know what I mean so 007 Mortal Kombat um what other games Turtles in Time what about classic mm -hmm. what about you um honestly like um there wasn't a lot of kids where I grew up but there was this one kid down the street he was like rich he had everything he had like cool snow speeders and like <laughs> all the cool toys and stuff right and he had a 3do mm -hmm. which i don't even know what the 3do is yeah it's a really like obscure cd based console from 93 and um when he got the n64 it was brand new like my mom never got us new consoles right mm -hmm. we still had the boring super nintendo mm -hmm. but he's like yo you want to come play uh, n64 i'm like hey, well, absolutely so we go over there and i remember we played mario 64 and mario kart and then he's like well i got a 3do and that just blew my mind because like I never heard of this thing and like yeah so playing 3do when i was younger was really cool mm -hmm. um i don't remember what i played honestly but <laughs> yeah i just remember that kid uh the rich kid with the 3do and the 64. i had one of those thing. guys next door too man he had all the games at a pool in his backyard wow you know what i mean and it's not like in ground but he had like one of those big ones yeah, that, big one, but yeah. On top of the ground, yeah yeah and he had all the new games and stuff so i'd go over there and play the xbox and yeah yeah man it was good times yeah. <laughs> mm. definitely a good way to get try out the new stuff but, exactly you know, i'm like oh yo i always that. message him but i'm like yo are you gonna I, what was it they used to use back in the day like myspace or something yeah myspace Sopia. ms uh, nectopia msn yeah. 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 msn yeah. messenger, MSN yeah. messenger. Yeah. that's what because we used to have dial-up internet so mm. you couldn't use what it is you for those i'm probably aging myself a little bit but you know like dial -up. You, yeah yeah dial-up so you sound. could yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do. you couldn't use the internet yeah. At the same time as a phone, so I just go on MSN quick and then you'll meet me at the parking five thirty. We'll go and uh, play ball or something. I'll yeah. come over to play the new game that's wrestling. You, I was really into wrestling and hockey those times. Yeah, and he's like, "Yeah, come over, man. My mom's picking it up right now. She's going to Toys R Us." I'm wow. like, "Oh, you're getting a new toy. I'm gonna play it tomorrow, you know." Yeah. So it was cool. It was cool that I could try those stuff. Cool, you know, pretty easily when they came out. Yeah. There was another kid uh, when I was in, I think, grade seven or something, or grade six. We used to, he lived across the street from our school, and at lunch, we'd walk over and play four player Smash and four player Goldeneye. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was some good times, too. Just uh, I miss that with like games nowadays. You can't just get four buddies together and, yeah. and just grab some pizza and a couple of drinks and just have some fun, right? Like, yeah, the online, I feel like the online multiplayer ruined that okay. for the actual you know one screen like it's weird. i feel like it's weird now like, you know, one yeah it, it is yeah I, I can't even play touch screen honestly yeah that's why we like do land parties so. yeah so you get your own screen uh, yeah and you still get that coolness of having your buddies over all kind of lapping it up and you know, yeah oh yeah. you jerk you just shot me you sniped me from across the I way i know right? yeah exactly friendly fire sometimes you know it's yeah. like yeah i feel like those are what gaming was really about like even nowadays when i'm playing mario party and people are physically there and you're like oh man they help me like that excitement yeah it's not the same how it's it online yeah. yeah don't get me wrong like i played some online stuff and met some cool people yeah, yeah but yeah. nothing beats that beside the person you know just interaction with an arm's reach of uh giving a little shot if uh i know i know playing dirty, i right? remember we played motor combat and i'm losing or something and every time i'm um losing i just slap his controller you know yeah. figure out them and be like hey what are you doing yeah. like ah. <laughs> you know yeah so that's why i try to keep uh or do land parties because it keeps that kind of memory alive for some of myself and my buddies because mm -hmm. yeah we all miss that what do you think like what game in like your collection do you think means the most to you other than like not your favorite but like means the most to you, like, um, you that's, that's a good question um actually there's one game um that i have that is worthless but it's a copy of mortal kombat ultimate 3 and it's the copy that i rented 
as a child. Um, it's beat up. It barely worked. I got a blow in it. The label's destroyed. Mm -hmm. That's one game I don't ever get rid of because that's the game I rented every week, all the time. <laughs> like, um, didn't they say blowing on it is actually not good? That's what they that's say. What they say but I'm but so used to. I'm doing telling it. you, man. If I don't blow in that thing, it ain't working. <laughs> I blow in it works. Good enough for me. Yeah. But, I remember um, doing that every time. Yeah, and it works. Um, but that game means, means a lot to me because it's one game from my childhood that I've, I've had so many memories of playing with friends, my sister, my brother. Um, again, it's worthless, but it means something to me. Um, so that game is really important to me. Um, I'd say the one single game. Mm -hmm. I think so mine, is, mine is Legend of the Gaia. I actually have it here today, actually, because... Uh, about Gaia? La Gaia. Oh, oh, you brought it. Remember, wow. I brought. I actually brought it because remember you said when you want your disc that. Or did you want to run thing. through? Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And have you played this game? I have not. Oh, That's RPG, right? Yeah, man. This yeah. is one of the one of my favorite games on PlayStation One growing oh, up. Double Legend. disc. Yeah. So it's long. No, it's one disc. Oh, it is. It's, oh, it's weird. It's weird though. It's, I know that's a lot of people. I think thought that. for sure it was double disc. Oh, okay. Cool. It was just in a big box, I guess, just for the artwork. But yeah. it, it's a really good RPG. It's actually not that long. So how much is that going for now? Do you know? Because I may have to pick that up just because you love it so much. Yeah, it, I, it's probably over $100. Oh, it's, it's, okay. I, I think so. But um, yeah, this is one of the funnest like RPGs I've ever played, man. And even to this day, if you're playing it on the um, CRT, it holds up, man. And it's just a great game, man. You can get it on the like on the online store where you could. So I had it on the PSP Go or whatever, mm. and the PSP and playing it handheld. Playing it on the Go, that's cool. Yeah, it's a really good game, man. <laughs> really good game. So I feel like, and this is my copy from time, so it's in great shape, It's man. mint. I yeah, can see it's yeah, clean case. Yeah, I, mean, man. I may have to uh, do some trading in PGT yeah. if uh, they get a copy in. Yeah, man, it's a, that's a great game. So man. that's from your childhood? Like yeah. you played it when you were a kid? Yeah, my oh. brother actually got this. I remember he was, he's, a, he's older than me, and he's in, to be honest, I'm more into, I kind of, I don't want to say if I'm more into collecting than I am gaming because I, it seems like I'm doing that a lot more than playing. He's into more playing, so he gets games in, like you said, 100 hours in, 50 hours in, he's on it all night. I, I have to, I'm on the PlayStation app and he's always on playing. Yeah, yeah, so when he turned 18, he got a credit card, you know, and he's like, Mom, yeah, I'm going to get the PS1 and this, and he brought this game home, and I've seen him playing it, and I was like, I need this. I need to play this game. So I'd be playing it on the other save file. And when he moved out or whatever, I'm like, you're not taking this. <laughs> He's like, you don't have a console. I'm like, I'll get one myself. And wow. then I always had it with me. And yeah, so you it was, kept it, huh? yeah, it was one of my favorite games, man. And that's awesome. Yeah. See, now that's the thing about childhood games. Like a lot of collectors, like nowadays, their parents would take games and get rid of it. Yeah. Like it's hard to. It's rare to have a game from our childhood that survived over the years. Like yeah. I know my mom when she sold her house, mm -hmm. she unloaded a bunch, and um, I was I only have a handful of my childhood stuff because mm -hmm. she got rid of so much of it. But um, like even pickups we get, that's somebody's childhood we're buying, right? Exactly. Um, so yeah, you should yeah be definitely thankful you still have that. Man. Yeah, that's I think awesome. I think this in red Pokemon Red card. This thing is beat up now, but. They might yeah. probably need this. I don't think those need batteries either. They do need batteries, but for some reason, the red blues, man, they never die. <laughs> but then you get like emerald and ruby batteries and sapphires are dead. dried, yeah. And they're like 15 years newer. Yeah, making them like how they used to. <laughs> I still have one of my OG red carts, and it still stays, man. I got my original save that on there. Like, um, just a quick little tip if you ever want to save those Pokemon from the original cart before the battery dies, you can save them to Stadium. Like, so I did that. So oh, they're always there now. Oh but, yeah, and then they said that you can pull them. I forgot you could do that. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Um, but um, because I know like I lost all my original crystal Pokemon because the battery died just sitting in storage. Because I have my OG crystal cart, but at the time, like when I'm like 16, 17, it's sitting in a drawer. I'm not playing games. Which I eventually mm -hmm. the battery died and I lost them, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Those, but yes, we have a lot of you OG cards now. All right? my Pokemon stuff I have from when I was a kid. That's one thing I kept. And the boxes too. Mm -hmm. um, I was just a weird kid, and I just kept the boxes for some reason. I, was, I never thought I'd grow up and be a big collector. I was the kid. Don't hate me for saying this, but I was a kid that when I got the boxes, <laughs> just rip off the top and take my game out, and that was it. Well, not every game. Some of them I I, I like the artwork, but I didn't care to keep it. Yeah. You know I mean? So I had all of this stuff growing up, and it's crazy that how much the market has went up now. Is that I want them back, so you have to go and rebuy them. But yeah. It's, way more expensive now.
you're partially to blame for that because everyone was like you. It's packaging as kids, right? So they're just like garbage. Yeah. Right? And that's why the cardboard didn't survive because who thought to keep it, right? Um, so, yeah, no. Everyone did that. Yeah, I remember some 64 games we had and I just opened the box, threw the box away, right? Mm -hmm. Don't care about that. Do you think like the, incre the increase in game makes you feel like you want to stop collecting ever? Um, yeah, I, and even with everything going digital, I feel like maybe PS5 and Series X are maybe some of the last consoles I ever get, really. Because yeah. you think they're, you know, five, ten years from now, are we going to still be seeing physical copies of games, right? Mm -hmm. Either, like, I, at least discs, I think, are going to go away again. Maybe it will be on, like, SD cards. Mm -hmm. But um, the digital future is upon us, I think. I hope not. Um, that's why I love like the retro stuff because I can pop in a Super Nintendo game or a GameCube game and it just boots up and I can play it. Right? Well, the things about it, they say it is, but I, people like us are, are gonna help help people hope are. that yeah because it's like I can buy this game now for eighty dollars, which that's probably like the price for even Switch games. Right? I think it was seventy nine dollars yep. and PS five and Series eighty nine ninety ninety yeah, yeah. So if I don't like this game, like you said, if I'm trying to jump into a new genre, I don't like this game. Even if I keep it for a little bit, they usually go for 50, 60 bucks. Mm -hmm. So at least I could sell that. Money. Someone yeah. else that likes the game can have it, and then I could use it to buy something I actually like. You can't do that with digital. I'm going to transfer you <laughs> some, <laughs> some transfer you a couple gigabytes over, and you pay me for that. I, I agree completely. I, you, you can't resell digital games, right? Exactly. And the thing I don't get about it is they'll charge you the same for a physical as a digital. That's and they right. save the price of the manufacturing, the artwork, everything, right? And yeah. you're still charging me 70 bucks, 80 bucks, like. That doesn't make sense. I feel like they're trying to take advantage of us. Yep. This digital world is not good, man. I feel like yeah, I feel like we have you to know, stay physical. Especially like we're starting to see it now, but some digital exclusive PS3, Xbox 360 games. You need 360 internet to play. To play, yeah. <laughs> and when when they're pulled off too, um, the mar the marketplace or the PSN store, you can't re-download them. Or Your console them. dies, it's finished. You can't yeah. play it anymore, right? Yeah, I don't think it's. I was telling you the other day that PS3 I have out there has this game, uh, Turtles in Time Reshelled. It's a remake of Turtles in Time, digital only game, only available on the PSN. Mm -hmm. And that's downloaded on that console I got in a lot one time. And you can't buy that now. Like people are reselling consoles with that game just to get that game. It's, it's lost to, to time, really. Mm -hmm. Like I think we're going to see that in the future where game, digital games are going to be lost, right? Yeah. And I've lost a lot of them too. So yeah. it's like if I forget, forget my password or log in for different consoles, because yeah. you only have one main console, so I have different emails for doing it. And it's just like, I feel like just complicating things and kind of destroying the hobby. But at the same time, these things are just skyrocketing in price for physical. It's something yeah. I feel discouraged. Like, do I really have to pay $130 for this card that I bought 10 years ago? And it's like, that's why, uh, I don't know, when I'm collecting, if there's something I really want, I always think, like, I should get it sooner than later because this thing is just going up, right? It doesn't get any cheaper unless they, like, do a re-release or something. But, yeah, I agree. It's it's a shame how it, it's kind of going that way. But um, I know with, like, kids, like, my older kid, like, all the kids at his school, they don't give two craps about physical, right? Yeah. They just want to download the game on their Switch and they're playing in two minutes, right? Mm -hmm. But something I've learned is it's almost like they're renting the game. Because once they lose the licensing for it, you're not playing it anymore. Yeah. You're going to stop me from putting my disc in and playing it? <laughs> yeah. Right? It, you can't do that. Exactly. The license is on this disc. And then essentially, yeah, you're renting a game because it's not really yours. Right? Yeah. It's kind of like that crypto stuff, I guess. Right. Or, it's all... Was it? Um, yeah, it's cryptocurrency or... That world. That, what's that? Um, metaverse? Like NFTs or whatever? Well, yeah, NFTs yeah. and metaverse. And it's like you're renting this stuff essentially as soon as you don't say it's not yours anymore it's not yours yeah this is mine i can hold this i can feel this yep. this is... it ain't going nowhere yeah. yeah no i'm totally a physical guy like you right yeah um but like i was saying i don't know how much longer you know i think there'll be a niche market maybe for guys like us but the generation now like even my youngest kid he doesn't yeah. care right and once they're playing it they can do it so emulation yep. is kind of a thing now mm -hmm. I guess emulation is winning and they don't think about the future like I guess, uh, like, when my older kid's in his 30s or 40s, is he going to want to go back and play Super Nintendo? Probably not, right? Yeah. So, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That, like, games, like, that will bring you through nostalgia, Link to the Past and Donkey Kong, Super Mario World, I can go back and play those, Duck Hunt, and play those and have fun because yeah. that's what I play. It's Super Mario RPG, like, 
It actually hold. They hold actually hold well, up yeah, pretty well. Oh, yeah. Super Nintendo and like hold up really well. Better yeah. than some sixty four and PlayStation games. Yeah, PlayStation One doesn't really hold. Or up. some ugly PS One yeah. games. This holds up. Though, yeah. On the um, CRT that you yeah. gave me. Thanks again. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's the thing too is um, if you play a game on the the TV it was meant for, I think that's the optimal way to play it, right? Yeah. Like last night when I was doing PS One on here, most things even like bad looking games in today's time they still look playable on a crt you put them on a, a flat screen and it's like Ugh, what is this yeah. <laughs> this is why i don't play this anymore you know what i mean right. like i can't go back to nes other than like duck hunt and like i think battletoads or ninja turtles like, yeah those games are meant to play on there other than that i can't well if you struggle with nes man there's no way you're playing atari yeah that's what i'm saying it's just I... pixels and colors on a screen <laughs> yeah i can't um, one thing i wanted to mention we kind of i kind of forgot to say was you talked about how you went from nes to um super nintendo to ps1 i was kind of the opposite i i stuck with nintendo all the way through and i missed ps1 like i played at friends houses and stuff so i think that's where um you're a little more well versed in the playstation side because i was i didn't even own a ps1 back in the day oh. um until i was like my 20s so um, so i miss games like uh, the guy. guy there right yeah um i did play like this game silent hill the so, first one okay. i played that at a friend's house and stuff and like Wow, that started my love for horror games, but um, I never played that to be honest. What about Legend of Dragoon? Do you see? No, that? I never played any of that. Like, I didn't even play Final Fantasy VII until my like later years at friends' houses. Really? Oh, man. so yeah, that, I missed, missed out on that. Market. Nostalgia for PlayStation One is for me, and two, three is when I was into sports and stuff. I didn't have a three. My brother had all of them. He had a three, but that's why I'm saying now. Even now, I don't know what games are good i've never i don't think i've ever wrapped a game other than like the sports games on yeah. playstation 3 so see so i think that people our age are kind of the same i was saying that when 360 and uh ps3 were out i was like trying to get a girlfriend i was getting my cars yeah, right? yeah. i wasn't playing many games i didn't even have a ps3 until i was an adult right yeah me too and i picked up a 360 in my like late 20 or early 20s when they were old right and like get them cheaper but yeah same thing we get busy with life or growing up we just don't play right so well, I had PS1, and then my brother moved out, and I had 360. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have two or three, but my cousins had two, so I always had a lot of games and played two, Def Jam, yeah. and all that stuff in two. Yeah. I never owned it three until adulthood, and then four and five just came along. But yeah, yeah like you said, we were busy doing growing up, I guess. <laughs> we yeah. kind of put the games on the games back side. I think everyone gets to that point. Like, like we talked about Pokemon before. Mm -hmm. uh, like We played Emerald and, and Ruby and Sapphire and kind of stopped after. Like I yeah. missed Diamond and Pearl right? yeah. when they were new. So. I missed all of them after Emerald. Yeah, so you, <laughs> you got some work to, to catch up on. Yeah. Yeah. I started Black the other day and then um, Shield and stuff. Or what came out? Something came out. I, um, I think Brilliant Diamond and Double Pack. Yeah. And I went to that and I stopped playing Black by I think I got a couple of badges on Black, so I'm going to have to run through that and then do two and then uh, Heart Gold and, and Soul Silver. I never played those. I heard they're amazing. But I just... oh, hold up. You have never played Hard Gold Soul Silver? No, just oh. Silver. Original Silver. So then you got to play Soul Silver, man. Like, yeah, man. That's, that's still the pinnacle of Pokemon, man. Really? You're going to love that thing, man. It's, what it's do you feel so like cool. the best form? Which, what should I play on? On DS? Honestly, or? I used to say 3DS, but then you talked a while ago about playing on DSi. I'm like, I'm going to bust out the DSi. And I started playing on DSi. I played Chrono Trigger all the way through on DSi. And it felt good in your hands? Comfortable. The DSi XL. Yeah. Um, it was comfortable. The screen was great. The battery lasted hours. I mean, those things don't die. bulletproof. I'm not going to lie. The 3DSs, I have, I'm being into the Sony and Nintendo. And man, the Nintendos, man. Like, I have some 3DS on the shelf. I just turned them on. I haven't turned them on in four or five months. And there's still, you have one nick down and yeah. full battery. I'm like, those things last forever. Right. Like, SPs too. I've busted out some SPs out of their boxes. <laughs> and they turn it's on. been like five years. And the light's red, but they turn on. Yeah. It's, so, it's yeah, insane the what they did. And it's it, it, it only like 50, 1900 milliamp, too. So yeah. I don't know how it works. This pres preservation is amazing on those. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think uh, DSi best definitely. I think the way to go to play something like Soul Silver. So, pretty more of a serious question now. It's like, do you think that when we game hunt and collect, do you feel like we're taking deals from other people that need them more, or or they're just not fast enough? <laughs> I don't know. It's a dog eat dog world out there, man. Um, mm -hmm. I've been doing this a long time, mm -hmm. and yeah, I'm sure like we take it from people that technically need it or but does anybody really need it 
yeah. to get video games, right? But it's a hobby. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's true. If I see like I've seen posts, it's like uh, free to like a needing family, a needy family. I ain't gonna go take that. Yeah. Right. Like someone's giving away like a Wii U or something, or a Wii to like like a family in need. Like yeah, by all means, I ain't taking that. Yeah. But if it's just a free bundle like I got today. It's just free, right? I'll come grab it, right? Like Yeah, I'd do so, that too. <laughs> honestly, it works both ways. Like, I've lost a lot of stuff, right? I try not to get upset about it. It sucks sometimes, but... Um, That's how it happens, right? Yeah, I think it's just... Uh, every man for himself, I guess. I try to have some dignity, right? I, I'm not a fan of upbeating or stealing people's loss, right? Yeah. But it happens to me. It happens to you, right? Like, it does happen. What's your take on that? Um, Yeah just like you said man i've been a good guy sometimes and and if i saw if i sold stuff people will come in and the first person i talk to i'm honest to them even when i get kind of outbid i kind of said yo i already somebody has dibs on it if you don't come through you know what i mean it sucks because i've had that happen to me too but if someone's on the way and someone's like oh i'll give you 300 for it you know what i mean and i've had that happen to me while i'm on the way as well i'm sure that's happened to you oh, yeah. it's kind of like after that's happened to, as i'm recently said to i'm like you're right, it is a dog eats wool. <laughs> so it's kind of like, but sometimes, like, if I'm picking up stuff and I know it's a a, a really good deal, like, you know, like, like a Soul Silver complete in box, someone's like, oh, 10 bucks. I'm not going to go to the, if I have a 20 on I me, mean, I'm not going to go to the bank and give them the 10 bucks. I say, we'll just take the 20. I actually bought one from a kid. He said he's saving up to get some kind of Beyblade or something, yeah. you know? And he was like, yeah, I need $20. And I had $20 and I had two tens in my pocket. And that's what he had posted it for. And I said, you know what? Enjoy your Beyblade. And I just gave him the money and he was super happy. And I feel like that's fair because I know what it's worth. He doesn't know what it's worth, but he just wanted a Beyblade. So yeah. I just, so you helped the kid out. Yeah. So I just, you know I, what I mean? I do feel bad buying from my kids. Yeah. So well, he wasn't like a kid. Too. Oh. <laughs> he like, wasn't like a kid kid. He, you know, he was like, I think he was like teenager, but. Oh, okay. You know, like. Um, I'm the same way though. If there's a smoking deal and like, it's only like an extra 10 bucks. Like there's GameCube got a lot. I got a lot of those, the $20 GameCube lot. Yeah. Like I gave her some extra money because like, dang, she was giving away a smoking deal. Right? Yeah. And I, I wanted to be generous. Like I ain't going to go pay full retail. What's the point? Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I don't want to give a, give him some extra. So, so I just wanted to talk about what it's like collecting in today's gaming market. Cause we both know it's kind of crazy. You know, there's still deals out there, but prices, man, are, are just insane on some stuff like even stuff i've had for years i go look at the video game store or look on ebay and like wow this game's going that much so that I, I, that happens to me a lot like i just be playing a game and if i'm at our local video game store and i see it going for 89 dollars but <laughs> what like i was looking at star ocean the other day on psp second evolution or whatever it's called yeah. i have all of them and i think it was something for 99 dollars i was like I got really? that for like wow. twenty dollars. I'm pretty sure. And I looked, I have it complete, and I looked in, and I was like, "Oh, this game went up. It's like almost a hundred dollars now." And I'm like, "Wow, I couldn't believe it. I was shocked." And then sometimes you just see what people are selling it for, and you have that game in your collection. Well, you probably, thankful. Probably happens to you a lot. What I mean, like, <laughs> you know, what I, I, mean? I hate when I see an expensive game. I'm like, I gotta pick that up, and then I don't have it. I'm like, oh well, I missed that boat. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but uh, even PSP, I remember when that game, that console was dirt cheap, man. Like people were giving away PSPs. Yeah. And now it's like on the rise. Mm -hmm. So um, and the Vita as well. The Vita too. I remember when that was leaving stores and discounted. I was finding games for five bucks on clearance. <laughs> yeah, Walmart bins, yeah. everything, and now they're the, lo unloading them. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah, some crazy, crazy prices on stuff. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately for someone like me, I have a lot that I want, so it doesn't really affect me a whole lot. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, like, I walk around this game room and I see stuff I have that I'm not really okay. Like, I'm okay selling it. And I'm tempted to want to unload some stuff because the prices are just nuts, mm -hmm. right? Like, the game I paid $20 for, I can get 1000 bucks for that. You know, it's tempting to, like, I'm going to list that, right? Mm -hmm. Um, another thing I want to talk about is like where we go game hunting and, and get our, our deals, right? Yeah, I feel I feel like me personally, I go to our local game stores or Facebook marketplace. I think a lot of people do that and use those things and maneuver them around like in a circle. Sometimes I can get it out to Sometimes I don't know if it's good. Sometimes I go to level up and get a game for cheaper and bring it to video <laughs> game trader and get a better deal on it. Or, yeah. Oh, he's, he, the owner's not listening to this oh, podcast. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. But sometimes I told, I was, I'm honest with him too. The one I go to mostly, I told him, you know, I got this one over there for cheaper, but you guys didn't have it, and I need the game to do yeah. that. So you know, make it work, you know. And a lot of those stuffs, I, I'm not that big on the thrifting or those stores. I do hit them up once in a while, but it's not like my main go-to. What about you? 
Um, just want to touch quickly on the whole video game store thing. Um, I love getting deals from there, and um, I'm a little guilty too because I'll get something cheap from another store and bring it there. But then I'll I'll tell them straight up like, yo man, I only paid this much for this. You know, I'm not expecting like huge dollars, like because I'm going to give it the money, and he understands, right? That's what I really love about anywhere having like a retro game store because you have a place to, to do that and turn your, your cheap finds into something you really want, Gold right? Mines. <laughs> yeah. So like I'll take, you know, lots there, get a couple hundred bucks and get all new Switch games, right? So I, I rarely ever spend money on Switch games, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. That's I why I have a drawer full of like a hundred Switch games because <laughs> they're all from like trade and, and cheap, right? Mm -hmm. But, um... I want to say thrift stores like i used to be really into like thrifting and i still go here and there but straight up man it's like tough to get deals at thrift stores now because everybody's looking first of all and places like um goodwills and, and valley villages um they just look it up on ebay right and charge them some like wild prices you get the occasional slip but um it's definitely harder to get deals at thrift stores i find if you're looking for stuff like 360 ps3 like last gen still deals but if you see a super nintendo game or a 64 game you're not going to deal with that at the thrift yeah. store right yeah even gamecube is, is tough right i feel like they caught on because people are always switching around they have their phone out looking at pricing and stuff before i used to just grab it and go and now they're like no this is worth um 50 dollars like yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean like minimum but yeah i feel like yeah thrifting is definitely the best way to do it and yard sales stuff like that yeah, oh, yeah definitely i just don't have the time to be driving around all the time so i just go to these designated spots but yeah those are definitely where you get the gems and <laughs> yeah i would say um pawn shops are good too depending because they're kind of like thrift stores where they look stuff up but like me i can look at a game and i have this like crazy knowledge where i can i know if something's like uncommon or rare mm -hmm. um i'll see like a gamecube game like years ago like slot car thunder it's it's a really rare game but it was worth five bucks i'd see that and pick it up and they don't realize to them it's just some lousy filler game right mm -hmm. so if you do this long enough you just kind of know what to look for but like you said um you're not going to get any deals on any marios or zeldas or pokemons or anything like that you're you're out of luck mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh garage sales though like i get some crazy garage sales scores but like you said you drive all day waste you know 100 bucks in gas and what, most times you walk out with nothing, right? Mm -hmm. um, even people at garage sales, like there's a few I've been to, and you take the stuff up to the, the to pay, and they're just pulling out their phone and eBay and eBay, and it, right? It's like it's a garage sale, man, not eBay. Yeah, like if I wanted to pay eBay prices, I just go on eBay. eBay. Exactly. So it's definitely a lot harder. I feel hunting and uh, getting deals out there, but they still happen. You just got to be persistent, right? And it, it's a lot of luck too. Mm -hmm. Like um, the garage sale I hit, you know, last weekend. Just pure luck, just stopping by one randomly and getting like some crazy scores, right? Yeah, I found a couple of good scores at garage sales too. You know, some people just want to get their clean out their stuff in their basement, mm -hmm. and I'll, if it's video game related, I could be that guy. They clean it out. Yeah, I'll know. take it. Yeah, exactly. take out the trash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> another yeah. man's trash, another man's treasure, right? They say. Yeah. So, uh, hands down, I think Facebook Marketplace is my cream of the crop for pickups. Um, Mine is Kijiji, to be honest. Yeah, I used to run Kijiji, Kijiji a lot, but I, I just, uh, I don't know. Shady. You, you, shady? you don't know who you're dealing with, mm -hmm. and I've been screwed a lot on there. Like, people send me the wrong addresses, or you're on your way, and they're like, oh, never mind. Right, yeah. you're just wasting your time. And then so. just delete you because you don't know them. Like, yeah, face, they're just like you know? Kijiji user. You don't even know who they are, yeah, right? Yeah. You don't know if you're going to be a mug. I have, right? It's happened a lot, but I got, like, majority, well, not majority, but... A good percentage of my like rarer games and steals and box. Remember that box on NES and um, SNES stuff I had, yeah. Star Fox, Goof Troop, and all that stuff. That, that guy in the stealth, you yeah. know what I mean? And he just was cleaning out his basement and GameCube stuff. And he was on Kijiji, you know, he didn't cross post or whatever they call it. Is that yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, so my people don't look at Kijiji, so I find some steals. I'm looking for. And I feel like a lot of people left Kijiji, and that makes it easier for you to get deals. Yeah. Because Nobody's on there, but I used to, like, yeah, get some crazy deals on Kijiji, but maybe I should go back, right? No, 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 <laughs> well, stay off, stay <laughs> off. <It's good. laughs> you know, um, speaking of, like, pickups, is there any, like, really good pickups that are just memorable to you? Like, you, just the craziest pickups? Well, Soul Silver Complete, not big box for, like, $10, but, you know, I paid yeah. 20 as I said. Um, that was pretty good for me because I was really looking for the game at the time, and I didn't want to pay an arm and leg for it because this is 
during this time where everything's skyrocketing, Pokemon, everything, Pokemon skyrocketing. It did drop a little bit. I don't know if you um, I, seen I it. I did see that Pokemon's kind of starting to level out a little yeah. bit. Yeah, that one. Um, a PSP Vita was in. I think it was in. Was it Red Deer or well, not Red Deer? It was that place right before Red, you get to Red Deer. The Comb? Was it called? Versus Innisfil and a Comb and stuff like that. Was it the Comb or something like that? It was an hour out of Calgary towards Red Deer. Yeah. And they had a PS Vita and like four games, like in, with cases and stuff, and thirty-two gigabyte memory card or whatever game memory card for I think it was a girl. She put it for forty bucks. Wow. And I was like. I'm going to be there in like an hour and a half. And then she's like, cool. I was like, all right. And I drove out there. That was pretty good for me. Because during the pandemic, I, I wanted to collect all of the Sony handhelds. So I was just on a hunt to get them without breaking the bank. Right? Yeah. That's how anybody wants to want to do it. And you know, spend less money and get the gems. And they're pretty hard to come by. And it was like a mint condition one. And yeah, I flew out there. It was a nice little road trip. And grabbed that one. It was pretty memorable. Beautiful store. I remember one time I got a Vita at a at a yard sale for thirty bucks. Really? Yep. Yeah, just, nice. That's one of those Slim people. Slim or OLED? Uh, I think it was the OLED. Yeah. I nice. took it in and got a hundred bucks trade on it. Nice. It was a good turnaround. But yeah. I already had that one. I actually got my complete box blue one for a good deal many years ago. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Is it aqua blue one. Yeah, aqua blue. Yeah. 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 yeah good deal. Nice. I think I got my Xbox One S and that for one seventy five for both. Oh. It was quite the steal, man. The guy that was selling it just wanted to buy a new vape. So he was just like unloading this. I'm like, yeah. hook me up, man. I'll take it. It's sweet. But, um, yeah. And that PS Vita 3D TV, remember? I got yeah. one for a good deal. And then after, I was, remember, I was me and you were looking forever to get one. And then they just started showing up on the market. Everywhere, crazy. Yeah. Like, I was like, wow. And I got one that wasn't working. And then I got another one after being patient. Does that ever happen to you when you're searching for something and then you spend the money on it and then you end up getting it? That's actually a cool story because this week I did the kid Icarus remember I told you on yeah. Amazon and I got they sent me the UAE version the Saudi Arabia version and I yeah. wanted it so bad and then the next like was it a week later I found the version I wanted for $10 <laughs> so it's like if I would just spend more patient would I have saved the money I guess you know <laughs> well that's the thing too like I've definitely been hit like that I spend the money on something and then boom it's on marketplace for 5 bucks or whatever right mm-hmm. but on the flip side I've been patient waiting for stuff for since like years and it never comes came up, around, yeah. right? So yeah. you can't live life quite like that, I guess. But mm-hmm. I have been bitten before where it's like, oh man, if I would have waited like another week, I would have got a good deal, right? Mm-hmm. Pay full price. Yeah, right? So I try not to pay retail if I can, unless it just came out then. You that's a little different, but yeah. that's, that's how you build a collection like us, right? Mm-hmm. We, we pick up blocks, keep the things we want, and try to sell or trade the leftovers. Yeah, exactly, just, because you're not going to enjoy every game, so I'm not just going to keep adding every game. Yeah. So I usually, uh, if I'm, unless I'm set collecting, like you said, you only got the stuff that you will want to play eventually. Eventually, yeah. yeah. Yep. Those people that go for like PS1 sets and like PS3 sets, like I don't understand that because you got... <laughs> you know 200 sports games right yeah like i don't mind sports games but i ain't gonna be playing you know like all 18 madden games uh, on ps3 yeah, right yeah exactly right so yeah definitely not doing that <laughs> yeah i would uh i talked about some of my memorable pickups but i don't think the podcast is long enough <laughs> i've got some crazy stuff but yeah. um one i'd like to mention is my uh couple of my kiosks like my xbox kiosk got for 80 bucks and um my, my GameCube kiosk, my red one, got that for a great deal too, so. Mm. Yeah, I got lots. I could just do a video on my, its own of my crazy pickups, but yeah, there's been some cool ones for me, so. Nice. Do you ever feel like you um, you ever made like a, not the adult decision, you're like, oh, I need to buy this for 300 but you're like, I kind of need that money, but you bought the game anyway? Put yourself in that bad situation. I know I've done, I'm guilty of that. I've done that a couple of times. Like, man, screw the light bill. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I think every collector has done that at some point. Yeah. Um, I know in my earlier days of collecting, you know, a good deal comes up and you're a little tight on before paydays, right? And like, yeah. we're not rich people. Like, everyone yeah. sees my videos and like, oh, you're rich. No, man, I am. I'm, I'm broke, man. Yeah. Like, I got a good job, but um, I'm not any rich, yeah. right? So. Mm-hmm. 
you know, we live paycheck to paycheck sometimes. Mm -hmm. And my earlier days, there's times where I'm like, oh, I can push off that utility bill mm -hmm. for two weeks, right? And I got to get this, right? Yeah. So I've definitely done that yeah. um, for been... myself, you know, having ramen noodles for for lunch for the next week, <laughs> right? McDonald's, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, McDonald's. That's mac luxury living. Mac, mac, and, mac cheese, and cheese. Mac and cheese. Ham and sandwiches. Cheese sandwiches, yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, I thought it was the only one that's happened, like, you know, I mean, I know certain YouTubers that actually had to sell the whole collect, sell the collection to catch up with what they had. Now they're rebuilding it, but doing it a smarter way that the way that we do it, right? So it's not like you're breaking the bank to get a game that you want. Yeah. By recycling these games, flipping, trading, using credit is, I feel like, is a great thing. Like if that our local game store gets a new game or a game that we want, I get it from them because now I don't necessarily have to spend the cash on it, right? Yeah, you, you, like me, like uh, like the same with Switch games. The new Kirby game came out, and I just took in a bunch of stuff and lying around. Mm -hmm. You know, I got like a hundred bucks trade, and I have maybe ten, fifteen bucks into this stuff. So yeah, exactly. I got a brand new Switch game for ten bucks, essentially. So exactly, yeah, it's an essential to collecting having a store like that. So. Yeah, I love I love that man because most of my high ticket, higher ticket items, I paid a little bit of cash and then mostly trade for it. So yeah. Right? Just like I got this Tron Bon statue, it was uh, eight hundred bucks or whatever it was, right? And that's mm -hmm. all. I would never spend that kind of cash on a statue, mm -hmm. but I took in a whack load of cheap finds through mm -hmm. stores, marketplace, and I had that thing paid for a trade, right? Yeah. And I think I had maybe like a hundred, two hundred bucks into the, all that stuff, right? Yeah. So definitely, big ticket items are nice to get mm -hmm. um, that way. Yeah. Um, uh, one thing I want to touch on when you said about how some of the YouTubers sell their stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, I sold my GameCube collection, not because I had to, mm -hmm. but because um, the offer was so crazy, but I ended up buying my house with it. Mm -hmm. And um, the thing people don't get is I had the GameCube collection back in like six to eight months, mm -hmm. right? I set aside a certain amount of money and, you know, collecting like we do, we know we'll look for deals where to go. And yeah, I rebuilt that collection for a third of what I sold it for yeah. in just a short period of time, right? I had to drop some big money on Pokemon Box and stuff, obviously, yeah. but... That's um, amazing, man. It's amazing how, like, I could get a house, get the GameCube set... And then get it back, And yeah. I still had some extra cash. Like, I bought some ridiculous things, like my $800 Bowser statue. Yeah. Right? I dropped some <laughs> serious money on that. Yeah. But, um, the thing is about it, like, at the end of the day, I don't know if we ever not have the passion or have the collection, but these things are investments as well. We yeah. love them. It brings the passion and nostalgia. But they are valuable as well. So mm -hmm. that's a that was a grown man thing you did to sell that collection. I know you love that. Yeah. You know what it, I mean? It was tough. But you got it back in, but now you have a house, man. Yeah. And that's a we that's a huge a smart step. Thing. Yeah, smart thing to do. If I could sell a little bit of my collection or one of my collections and buy the house, I I might have to make that decision too because the games will come around. But I don't know if I do it now. Would you redo the game for now? Um, <laughs> man, I would not. Have, I wouldn't get it for the prices I paid because I did this all post or pre COVID. Yeah. Um, I literally like got my mortgage and stuff like two months before COVID hit. Mm -hmm. So fortunately, um, GameCube was still on the lower end at the time. So it was all about timing. Timing. Um, yeah. But now, you know, if it was to get a house, I probably would still do it because. What good's a collection if you don't got a house to put it in, right? Exactly. Just so. be moving all the time. And the things about it, like, I'm currently collecting a North American Wii U library. And I did it. I started, I remember I started the beginning of the year. And I, before they did the eShop announcement and for 3DS and Wii U. And since that announcement, the good thing, you, you let me know to collect the heavy hitters first. So I, I tackled the majority of them. And now the prices are skyrocketing. I wouldn't, it wouldn't... It's becoming not as fun because I'm paying sixty dollars for a bargain game, you know. Right, if you're buying yeah. e on eBay, but which yeah. I haven't yet, but I mean, like it's coming down to the last couple now, and it's like, wow, they're uncommon, but I don't really want to spend this on a Skylander game or whatever. Yeah. But I'm glad that, like you said, the timing was better. They were still like, like, well, average price, but now it's ridiculous, right? Yeah, so. yeah like you said, once that you shop got announced, man. Like, ooh, there you go. It happened with PS3 when they announced PS3 uh, was closing down, like PS3 Game shot up. So, yeah, you definitely did it in the nick of time for sure. Because mm -hmm. it wouldn't be as feasible now. And uh, just on the Wii U set, with set collecting, sometimes, you know, if you built a set for fairly cheap, and let's say you got to spend retail in the last, like, two or three games. Like, when I know when I did GameCube, the first time I did that, it's like, man, I got this set for so cheap, I'm going to drop, you know, 80 bucks on Google Hyper Grind or something, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm almost done, so it's like, if I have to drop it, I will, but just to finish it I, my goal was to do it for all, the whole set under $3,000, and I'm only, yeah, I think, at 1650 So you're doing good. Yeah, and I'm almost done, so... Yeah. 
yeah man it's it definitely the prices have definitely affected my love for it but at the same time the way i'm doing it i'm thinking i'm doing it the smartest way i can absolutely <laughs> the, the thrifty way the cheap way right mm -hmm. the best way to collect is nobody unless you're i guess rich can go out and just buy sets buy, buy sets yeah. full, right <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, I was just kind of wondering, is there any like dream items that like something you just really, really want to get? Is there something out there, you know, you just love to have? Right? So, so like when I started collecting the handhelds, you know, because this gaming thing become, become very addictive. You're like, yeah. oh, I finished this mission. Let me do this mission. So after the Wii U, I don't know what I'm going to do next. But when I first started in 2020, ended in 2020, I wanted all the, the Nintendo handhelds. Then I went to Sony handhelds. Then I, the micro was the last one I got because it was like so obscure and not that many of them floating around yeah. like they're pretty expensive good get, get a good condition one and then i went to sony consoles not like one of every like pro this that that like one of every type it's ps3 like, one ps2 one yeah PS4. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. like that so i did that then i did it for nintendo um xbox not the s though but i got the, you had to get the s or the x i got yeah. the x because i didn't want the digital one anyways and for Nintendo, and I did, and I started Nintendo consoles. I need a Virtual Boy, mm. so yeah. that is my last console. Now I have all the Nintendo consoles, or at least one of one, each. One of each. Yeah, and the Virtual Boy, I never caught, came across it in a while. When I did, it didn't work, and I didn't want to spend the money three hundred dollars for a broken one. Yeah. Then I was gonna buy one on eBay. I seen it before, and they said it's working. But on the time it gets to me, is it? They can They're be... pretty fragile, man. Like it may not stop working in the mail, right? Yeah. Mm. So it's like Virtual Boys are definitely tough to track down. Yeah. But that'd be sweet if you got one. That's my. That's one of my. That's my dream. Like, that's on the list. Though, well, maybe know? after you play mine, you may not want one so bad. But <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it's such. It's history. Right? Yeah, yeah. If I could get one in the box, it would just. I'd just be happy to be on the shelf, and I could be. Like, I have all the Nintendo consoles, yep. you know. Yep. So I, mean, I have all of them good. except for that. I think. Yeah, so NES, NES, 64, um, GameCube, GameCube, Wii, Wii U, Switch, and all the handhelds you got, right? Yeah. So yeah, Virtual Boy is the, the missing yeah. link. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it is. I don't know if it's if I'm really going to be missing it or I have it, like you said, but... In my opinion, it's really cool. It's a great conversation piece. But as for actually playing it, it's, it's play for 10 minutes, have a good laugh, and you put it back on the shelf. Yeah. It's definitely a really cool piece to have, so... Did you have any dream pieces? Or um, dream game or something you never came across honestly man one thing i always wanted growing up was the gamecube kiosk and i do now so that um, was something i always wanted and it took me a de almost a decade to get one so yeah that would be my piece but i have it so i want to meet you kiosk yeah i remember when toys r us was getting rid of those and i tried getting that sucker oh yeah. it's going back to nintendo you know, i'm so sure i saw it marketplace never, two weeks later i know it never did never yeah. did well, that'd be cool yeah you you're the wii u guy so it'd be sweet to have it you just you gotta have some space when you get in the kiosk collecting yeah exactly yeah. i think that's going to be, be the only one i want just for like okay my set and i'm gonna go back and make sure everything's perfect then probably get protectors for them you know and like yeah. then i'll be happy and then maybe i might pick up some variant i picked up some variants along the way while i was collecting if you guys want to watch that you know make sure you see life to take gaming on youtube and stuff from episode one you know you're almost done <laughs> yeah no definitely yeah it's been fun watching uh watching you collect the wii u set mm -hmm. especially when you started right at the start right and yeah. remember your first few pickups right yeah like you got a long road ahead of you and now you're over the hill and yeah almost done man yeah man yeah. i agree with variants though it's cool to pick them up as kind of bonuses mm -hmm. but uh variant collecting is dangerous like and expensive yeah um, but like i came across a couple a few of them that were, like just the people just selling a regular price or even cheap and i was like I can't say no, you know, I have it already, but it'd be cool to get it, you know? Yeah. Um, I just want to talk about a couple more things. Just real quick here, were there any games that you really hyped for that disappointed you? And then on the flip side, were there any games that you weren't expecting much out of and they ended up surprising you? Because, like, I know, like, sometimes you'll pre order a game or you're really hyped for a game, you get it, and you're like, this is awful. Mine is right. really weird. It was the other day, actually. Did you know, like, on... Well, you probably know, but, like, on Super Nintendo, Lion King, and then on Sega, Lion King, they're different. Mm -hmm. And same with Aladdin. They're different same versions. with Aladdin, yeah. Yeah, same with Aladdin. And I was surprised. I was playing the Sega one the other day, um, Lion King, and I was like, this is actually um, way funnier than the SNES, the SNES version. This one is so hard. Yeah. And I was like, no, it's hard, too. It is, oh, okay. it is hard. But I was like, wow, this one feels better. And it's, 
it's actually i was just demoing it just to make sure it worked and i actually found myself playing and beating levels i was like oh this is really fun i was so surprised that the lion king and aladdin are good games man especially I, i'm surprised we played them growing up that's the cool thing about i know when you just pop in a game to test it and it's nothing you're not expecting much right and the next thing you know it's been an hour and you're still playing it right mm -hmm. i love that feeling just like finding a finding a gem right yeah yeah but um lion king and uh gen and uh aladdin are great on the genesis uh, I, I rented the, the snes versions when i was younger but those um, ones are really hard i actually like the aladdin genesis more than uh, the super nintendo one but mm -hmm. And then there was um, Lady Sia on GTA. Yeah, that, one, that one is a hidden gem as well. My homie was telling me about it, and I tried it out, and I was like, "Wow, this is actually a lot of people don't even probably know about it." It's like it's up there with Golden Sun and stuff like that. Like yeah. it's that playable, the graphic, the art style, really good game. So I feel like that game, looking at from the cover art or just looking at it and looking at from reviews and like, "Oh, this game's gonna suck," but actually playing it and giving it a try, it's different, but. It's really fun. It's probably kind of like po a Pocky. Pocky and Rocky. Pocky and Rocky, like you yeah. said. You don't expect much, and then you play it, and it's really fun. Yeah. So. Um, just a quick thing I want to say is they're actually remastering Pocky and Rocky for Switch, too. Really? And we're pretty hyped about that. I actually got the pre-order in on that. But With, on Switch? It's coming. Uh, LRG? Uh, no, I think it's just a... Or maybe it is. Uh, don't quote me on that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I pre-order a lot of games sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, when it, it comes out cool general too. release, I'll... Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a fun co-op game for sure. Um, well, it's, it's hard as balls, but yeah. it's fun. I'm sure if it's on the Switch, I'll be able to play You'll it. Stumble yeah. across it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. my Switch library is actually getting pretty good too. I'm happy about it. The Switch has just so many great games. Mm -hmm. So many, almost too many. Like collecting for that library would probably be insane, right? It'd probably over 1,400 now, I think. And I remember when Switch came out, there's some people like, I'm going for the Switch set because set collecting was all the rage then. Yeah. Like, you crazy, man. They're still <laughs> making games. Yeah, you have to still grab it while it's coming out, yeah. while they're coming out. That's what I was doing early. And then just, and then I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to play over here, man. Just yeah. like, tape it off. Especially in like new console collecting, like, you, there could be 5,000 Switch games by the time the comp is done. You don't know, right? Yeah. And there's no deals on those, really. Like, yeah. you're paying up, 50, up front, yeah. right? Big money for these, right? The cheap is 50. You don't even have a chance to get a, a deal, right? Yeah. You're not getting a $2 Switch game. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Yep. Um, I, I want to know, like, what are some of your favorite games, like, of all time? You know, so let's say you have to do, like, a top five or ten like just games that you can play over and over and you just never get tired of games are like series because me i'd be like the zeldas the pokemons yeah final yeah. fantasy 7 is up there for sure yeah. legend of gaia um super mario rpg it just goes nostalgia i feel like yeah those are my type of games what about you um yeah, there's lots, man. Like, <laughs> there's so many. It's just so hard. It's such a hard um, topic. Games like Snow Bros, Donkey Kong Country 2, Earthbound, Super Mario RPG, Link mm -hmm. to the Past. Um, I love like the modern games. I love the Fire Memorials game on Switch, mm -hmm. Smash Bros Ultimate. Mm -hmm. I love Left 4 Dead 2. Uh, Days Gone Pikmin is probably one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah, you ain't a shirt right uh, now. <laughs> yeah, I love Pikmin. Um, I never played it, to be honest. Oh, see, you got, you got some games I, to play. I, I think I have it on Wii. Is that Wii? There's the Pikmin 3 and Wii U. Yeah, yeah. so I'm going to have That's a good to, one, too. Yeah, I'm going to have to give it a try. Um, my, uh, that's actually, just real quick, my, my youngest kid's six. Uh, he's six. He beat Pikmin 3 on his own. Really? And, like, straight up, I was impressed because it's not an easy game. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Kids, game, he's, yeah he's getting his back love. Like, he's catching up. Yeah. Um, but I love the Kingdom Hearts series, too. Um, really? Have you, have you played Kingdom Hearts? I have them all, but no. Dude, I Cloud's think... in them. And and, and one? Squall and one and two. I don't yeah, know about one three. And two. Yeah, not after two, I think. I, I haven't beaten three. Are you sure it. Cloud's in one? I thought it was just Squall. No, he's in one. I'm pretty sure he's in one. I don't think you get to fight him in one. Now I'm starting to wonder. I haven't played one in a long time. Yeah, I think it might be two. Maybe it, it is two. two. Yeah. Or Squall's in one. I have them all. I do plan to do a run through, you know? It's Final Fantasy meets Disney. It's yeah. crazy good, man. Like, And I know, in, I think it's two where you actually, on a side quest, you have to fight Cloud and Sephiroth. Mm -hmm. And they are the toughest battles in the game. Mm -hmm. That Buster Sword Man and, and uh, Sephiroth's huge sword. Yeah, right? so, yeah. And, anyway, yeah, um, I love Kingdom Hearts and um, Marvelous Capcom's really great. So yeah, there's a lot I of... I never played that. Yeah, I heard 2 is the two big is, boy. 2 is yeah. the pinnacle. 3 is great too. 
One is kind of bare bones. I have to eat them a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, two is definitely the best in my opinion. Um, if, you, if you're a fighting game fan, they're definitely worth checking out. But mm -hmm. I love a nice variety of games, you know, RPGs, action, fighting. So what? what is that, those are your genres? Those are like some of my favorites, but I'm open to anything really. Like, yeah, you know, like, it's uh, good. I'll take a recommendation and give it a try. That's how I am too. But JRPGs and RPGs are this role-playing games are just like my thing. And yeah. platformers and Mario stuff. It's just yeah. yeah it's, then you start to say like, well, actually, all of it, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> even like some sports games, like this hockey game I, I love on GameCube, NHL Hits, two thousand two. Mm -hmm. Like, I love that game, man. Like, and just yeah, I'll play anything really mm -hmm. if I'm having fun. It's all good. So. Mario and Sonic on Switch is the Olympics. It's Olympics. Fun. Yeah. I like knocking Mario out over Sonic. You know. <laughs> yeah. Some some games you just don't expect to be good. Right? Yeah. You hear like sleepers. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, I'm, the last thing I want to talk about is like, how does like your spouse feel about your collecting? Because I know it oh. takes a special kind of person to put up with people like us, right? Mm -hmm. Man, it, mine's not very spoiled. That's the say the least. I'm just being honest with you guys, you know, I'm being yeah. real authentic here. Not the most supportive. She plays here and there, but she thinks I have enough. Well, I guess once you get over that 500 mark. She's kind of like, like, you're not going to play them all. They're just collecting dust, taking up space. They're expensive. But I used to be really into sneakers as well, which is like 255 or 100 plus a pair. So I told her, like, think about this. I don't buy sneakers anymore. So I could buy, like, a whole lot of games for this one pair of sneakers, right? So it's a cheaper hobby, you know? And they're going up in price because I'd be getting sneakers, rid of some sneakers and, you know, and help you do this. So maybe it's just a habit, but... Yeah, she doesn't really like me too. And then when I brought that big CRT and two of them <laughs> into the house, she's like, this guy is a bad influence on you, man. He I've has all before. these TVs and, you know. <laughs> I was like, no, man, it's not like that. I love these. These TVs are just the best. And I showed her the picture and I showed her the split screen. I'm like, see, I'm playing Smash Bros. here and you can ruin Mario Kart, you know. And she's like, that is kind of cool. See, yeah, but you just got to warm them up. Yeah, I was like. <laughs> yeah, I've been there too, like. When, when uh, I first got with my wife, um, she, she didn't quite know how crazy it was going to be, right? Yeah. But, Did you accumulate um, all of this? Um, like, I had a decent bit of collection in storage when I first met her. Mm -hmm. I only had, like, an upstairs half-split house like, mm -hmm. when, I, when, I, when I met her. And a lot of this was in a shed. Mm -hmm. You know, I just didn't have the space. But when we got our own first full house, I started pulling it out. And she's like, I didn't know you had this much stuff, right? Mm -hmm. It turned into this. <laughs> Right? Crazy. When you're buying a house, I'm like, ah, this is the deal. You can have the upstairs, you do whatever you want. I'm having the basement of the game room, right? And that mm -hmm. was kind of our, our happy medium. Mm -hmm. um, I know people that like have games all over the house, right? Mm -hmm. With your spouse, you gotta give a little take a little, right? Yeah. If you can contain your hobby into one area and then they give them their thing to do. It's like a piece, yeah. When I lock my door in my game room, she's like, okay, this is great. But I mean, like, I have the PS5 in the OLED downstairs because I have people over it multiplayer and you know it's just easier there so but it looks clean you know just a little section of games and yeah, yeah. Game normal, room, right you go up into my room you're like this guy is a freak <laughs> you know right but, yeah like, i was her deal too she's like i want a normal looking house like, yeah that's fine you come to my house it looks normal yeah you don't know what kind of weirdo i am when you, until you get down to the basement yeah, right? yeah exactly so no yeah. it, it's good and i think our spouses like have hobbies too right yeah. and i mind gaming so then your wife should have something else right yeah. like but I understand the struggle sometimes. Like I feel some heat sometimes, you know, mm. bringing in CRTs or kiosks, right? Yeah. Another one. Yeah. Right? Um, my wife wasn't a, like a big gamer growing up, so she doesn't know the the appeal to it, right? So it's hard for them to understand. And the things about it, I feel like you do when you're an adult when you couldn't do when you were young. Like I said, right. I grew up in a single with a single mom, so even though I know maybe on birthdays or on Christmas I should bring so a game for me that I wanted or played been playing at my friend's house you know a new one's out now but she thought that was still cool get it for me I'd appreciate it but I couldn't afford to get all the games I wanted then so I feel like it's like a relief to get them now and try to play them now and that they're still kind of cool you know like, and we're making up for lost time yeah right? exactly because like I know I used to flip through magazines like oh I wish I could play this right now you can um, and now we can right so yeah. it's yeah making up for lost time mm -hmm. so it's having un understanding spouse I feel is important um, but obviously you gotta be reasonable with it right it's uh, a lot for some people to take in right mm -hmm. so yeah good stuff mm -hmm.
but uh, I do. I just got to shout out my wife because she is very understanding. Because there's been times you must have a real one. <laughs> yeah, there's been times she's like, "What are you doing? Why do you need this TV? Why do you need this kiosk? Why do you need this game? Don't you have this game on two other consoles?" Yeah, I don't do that. Yeah, I don't. It's I, don't an HD. I don't. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I do that, but I don't double dip. Like if I like yeah. Wii U with the Wii U library, I'm going for it. If it if it's on other consoles, like 3DS or something like that, I'm not gonna pick it up. I'm not and gonna pick it up. I agree with that too. Like I have the full GameCube set. Like when I pick up games like Def Jam on PS2, I don't need it for for PS2. I got it on GameCube, right? Yeah, you know. But I don't double dip like that either. There's, yeah. Like space is already kind of limited as it is. Yeah. Right. And unless you unless you're doing a set for the PS2, then you wouldn't need that, which is yeah. insane. Don't do that. <laughs> PS2 is a big one. Yeah. Too. Yeah. But yeah, I, I agree. Double dipping. Uh, there's no really no need. Yeah. Um, but you're a GameCube guy. Rather than PS2, obviously, right? Yeah, well, I'm but a- then there's certain games that, like, I had the GameCube set, I have the set, but there's certain games I prefer on PS2 or Xbox because they just run better, look better. PS2, I think Def Jam right? feels better than um, GameCube to me. Like, the, maybe the controller. I just, it, it probably does. GameCube was actually the least powerful of the, the three systems. Yeah. Because right? um, it was more like, just like, fun games and stuff. It was like family-oriented, right? Mm-hmm. Just you know, like the Switch and the Wii, Wii U. Yeah, Wii. It's, it's nowhere near the power of a Series X or a PS5, but yeah. it's got fun games. It's a family console, right? Yeah. It's like there's Nintendo over here, and then over here is the other two competing, right? So mm-hmm. it's kind of in its own little little area there. So the same as in GameCube. It wasn't really trying to be the most powerful console like Xbox and PS2. Yeah, so. they're always in their own lane. I like that. I find actually Xbox is a bit stronger than PS2 in some areas. Like I prefer Xbox over the three of them, really? just because they output better. Uh, like what is it, 1080i on some games, mm-hmm. which is crazy for an OG Xbox. Yeah. But yeah, my OG Xbox not even plugged in. Because <laughs> no. the 360 can run it. It, it can. But not all games though. I went to play uh, an old WrestleMania game and it wasn't backwards compatible with the 360. I was like, dang. I didn't realize that, so that's true. Their Xboxes are backwards compatible, but only to right. certain points. Yeah. Um, one last thing about the spouses I wanted to talk about is, like you said, how you're saying, "Oh, I'm not buying sneakers anymore," right? I said to my wife too, "Well, I'm not out there getting drunk and and doing exactly. drugs, drugs and stuff, yeah. right? <laughs> like I'm at home. You know where I am every day, yeah, right? I'm not out meeting women or doing fool around. I'm in the basement being the loser, right? Yeah, so." Yeah, it's nice to... Uh, yeah, so that is a relief for them. I always... I hit that. Just cause, like, I'm not going clubbing. I'm not doing any of this stuff. I'm just buying games, trading games, and coming back home. I'm back home, to I'm, you, baby. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. in the room. You know, I'm in the yeah, room. You, you want to see me, you can come sit down. It's like, no. I'm scrolling my TikTok or whatever. I'm yeah. like, okay, fine. Well, see, that's your hobby, right? Yeah, I'm not doing anything, you know what I mean? People yeah. haven't probably even seen me that aren't in the gaming community in so long. So it's like... Yeah, I had some old friends like that. Like, you're always at home. Like, yeah. It's my happy place. Now, yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. So, I feel happy being in your happy place. You know? <laughs> well, I appreciate that. It's mm-hmm. my little slice of heaven because you know, after a long day and you're stressed, it's nice just to come in your little area and just chill and Relax. get away, right? Especially when the kids are in bed, it's like it's, uh, I don't know, de-stressing, I guess. Mm-hmm. Which I'm very fortunate to have that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I guess we're getting pretty deep into this. Let's get to the end here. I want to quickly talk about your opinions on CRT gaming to modern gaming. I know a lot of people um, don't really know, like, why do people have these old TVs, right? Yeah, I actually posted um, my CRT clip today, and someone was like, what are you doing with that big TV? I'm like, to be honest, when you're buying a, when you're playing the old consoles, it look, the pictures even today hold up better than what you do on, like, on a regular screen. Like, people who have the HDMI compatible um, capabilities on the GameCubes, and you put them on an HD screen, they don't look as good as you put them on components on a, a regular CRT or HD CRT, you know? It just looks crispy. We were just, you were just showing me that the yeah. other day, the difference between comp- composite and component, right? So it's like, it's night and day that these old consoles were made for these TVs of that generation. Yeah, they're designed for that monitor, that, that TV, yeah. right? Um, I agree, like those HDMI adapters on GameCube, they look awful on uh, yeah. like my 4K Samsung TV, yeah, right? Like, they, they don't look good. I'll even take composite on a CRT over HDMI. Yeah, exactly, to a HDMI to the screen, 4K screen. TV, yeah. yeah. 
only bad thing of negative things about them is that they're so heavy. Yeah, oh, yeah. They're so heavy and will ruin a little bit of your walls. If you're bringing you're them not careful. House. Yeah, if you're not careful. But yeah, That's than, a true true enthusiast when you banged up your walls trying to get it in the house. Yes, I did. your back. I can scrape my CRT just a little bit right here. It, yeah. it makes me upset, but you know, it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. The sound quality, dual pictures, that's so much cool thing. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'm I'm kind of a purist that way. We're like behind Tay. You guys obviously can't see it, but I've got a 1980s console TV, and that looks mm -hmm. great for Atari and Nintendo Vision. Mm -hmm. I'm a, a true believer of playing the original hardware on the original TV time, pe time period correct TV. Right? Mm -hmm. The Atari was designed for a TV like that. The picture's crappy, mm -hmm. but that's what it was designed for, right? And then the HD CRTs are. Great for GameCube, Dreamcast, PS2, Xbox, and then you get like the Trinitron, Wegas, and 310s and stuff, and they're great for 16-bit and 64, PS1, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So Wii too, right? Wii looks great on either or, either or. Probably better on the HD CRTs. I just mine inputs are full, but oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, even I even run PS3 and 360 on my HD CRTs, and they're so, great. So. so do you think X Xbox One looks good on HD too? As well? Um, I I put an Xbox One on it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's better on a on modern TV. Yeah. I think 360 and PS3 are kind of like the peak for HD CRTs because mm -hmm. um, through component, um, that's probably where I'd, I'd draw the line. What, after that. what about PlayStation? So PlayStation One would you would say it looks better on the Wega than the HD? Yeah, because it's more polygony, right? Yeah, it's it looks good with those scan lines. lines and, yeah, yeah. So like. The, my my uh, Trinitron 310 here, mm -hmm. I got like Sega Genesis 64, Turbo Graphics, PS1, SNES, NES, mm -hmm. and they all look great on that because mm -hmm. they're more pixelated polygony graphics, right? And getting the GameCube and, and PS, uh, PS2 and Dreamcast and Xbox, mm -hmm. they're more defined and they just look good on that. So. Yeah. Definitely, if you have the space, um, I'd say CRTs are great for that era of gaming. Yeah, it's definitely a must have if you're have a gamer or collecting retro console yeah games. if you're a retro gamer they're, they're you're, not, you're not a real retro gamer until you have one of, the, one of those yeah. and scraped your wall <laughs> right and broken your back or squish yeah. your fingers yeah get in the weight room a little bit because when you're moving nobody's helping you they said <laughs> the thing too is i find like not only they're heavy but they're so dang awkward yeah it's right cold. very front heavy yeah yeah so I, I'm, I'm shout out to my buddies that helped me move my like 10 tvs in here yeah it's more um, than that, but it's more than that. <laughs> Once they're These in place, are easy, yeah. yeah, the little guys are easy, but the big boys are uh, like, like Tay said, they're heavy, they're a pain in the butt to move. Yeah. But when you're sitting there gaming on them, man, they're just crisp, nice sound. Like they're beautiful, man. Yeah, it's worth it. Definitely so, worth it. But again, um, I love my 4K TV too, like Series X and yeah. and PS4 PS5. and PS5 were fantastic on those TVs. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you got the space in a game room, you know, definitely you suggest it. I definitely do. Get uh, get some CRTs for the retro stuff. So. Mm -hmm. All right, kind of the last thing I want to talk about is um, just the kind of people we met in this hobby. Like I've been doing this a bit longer than Tay, mm -hmm. and I've met some really good people in this hobby. Um, for instance, like Tay here, mm -hmm. like I, I consider him a friend. He's a mm -hmm. super cool guy, mm -hmm. right? And we met through gaming. Like it's a, a shared passion between gamers from all walks of life, right? Yeah, it definitely introduced me to a bunch of people that I consider friends as well, man. You know, and it's like I would never met these people if I didn't have the same passion as them. And it's always good to have friends that you both passionate about the same thing because you know you don't have to, you can be genuine, you can be yourself. I don't have someone looking at me like, oh, nerd, I could just say, look at these pickups, and they're as excited as I am about it, you know? I'm happy right. for them when they send me those, they're like, sweet, awesome, you know? And yeah. it's just like, keeps you going, and it's it's good, you know? Birds of a feather flock together, that's how I think, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. And I know, like, for me personally, growing up, like, games weren't cool. Yeah. Like, if you're playing, like, my Game Boy, you're I'd be embarrassed nerd. to bring it to school. Yeah. Right? It's like, look at that loser. And you're playing Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh? Like, yeah. You're thinking about the anime? Like, yeah. now it's, I think it's a lot more accepted no. socially accepted it has yeah. it's become so mainstream like some people say gaming's bigger than movies right? yeah i think Which, it is i think it is it's a booming business and mm -hmm. it's way more accepted well, like me growing up like i didn't know any girls that played besides my sister exactly right yeah. but now like there's gamer girls like legit ones that yeah are, i know some good good girls like my friend uh kelsey she's a she's a, a nerdy girl mm -hmm. and she's super cool and she loves games right like mm -hmm. so yeah, I think it's super sweet, man. It's for every every genre, you know, and it's yeah, it's just an amazing hobby. You meet some great people with it, makes some strong, nice connections, you know. And yeah, absolutely. 
Definitely, man. It's definitely one of the highlights of loving the and video games. You know, yep. cool people. You know, mm -hmm. even like uh, the store store owners we meet and stuff. Right? Oh yeah, building those connections like, with them. It's like I'm know. connecting the Wii U library and the store owner would send me text messages like, "Yo, do you need this one? Do you need this one to try to help you?" You know what I mean? Not only just to generate income for them, but because they generally trying to help you get it yeah, done. Yeah, build that rapport with you, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's like, that's super sweet, man. Yeah, then the, the store owner here with me, mm -hmm. like he's known my kids since they were born or before they were born. My mm -hmm. older boy, he's mm -hmm. like four years old, five years old, right? Mm -hmm. He Now my older kid, he's got his own account at the game store and he's doing trade-ins now. So it's like mm -hmm. a recurring business, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just great to build that, uh, that connection with people. And, yeah. You know, it is like they said, nice to talk about games and pickups and, and with, someone, with cares someone else that cares that. right yeah it's like I, like he said i i've had some like co-workers if they see like a, an olimar amiibo in my toolbox at work and like what the heck is that <laughs> you don't understand or one yeah. guy found my youtube at work right mm -hmm. i don't know like phones are smart yeah it's like suggesting my youtube video to my co-workers like oh. is this you i'm like maybe yeah right like, so yeah they just kind of look at me weird like i yeah. never saw you as like a gamer right yeah so it's nice to to have those people right mm -hmm. um on the flip side though like not everybody's nice in this hobby unfortunately right? yeah um one thing i've learned doing youtube and collecting is no matter what you do and how nice and respectful you try to be someone's gonna hate on you whether it's jealousy or yeah. or whatever right so a lot of jealousy you, goes you, around. yeah you just gotta deal with the haters and uh i feel like a lot of people keep think, your head high i feel like a lot of people think you can't make it or if they tried something and it didn't work for them they try to put that negativity on you when it's like i just enjoy games and making videos for me in general it's like yeah. a it's like a documentary right you can go back and look back and see how far you progressed and how far you come games you've got yeah. backlogs and added to the collection and i feel like that's important so i'm doing that obviously because i enjoy it but other people that I enjoy will watch the video as well, right? So. Yeah. And even, like, on the YouTube community, I've met some great people through YouTube. And um, even those relationships are great because, you know, years ago when YouTube was smaller, like, you couldn't uh, have anywhere to share this kind of stuff with. And, like, mm -hmm. I love reading comments and interacting with people, right? And mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's really cool. And I like seeing passionate people like Tay on their channels, right? Mm -hmm. Where they're, they're so passionate, it's just a joy to watch, right? Just building that family and that community of people that love the same thing as you do, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So, mm -hmm. All right, well, I think that's going to be it for this podcast. Um, I just quickly want to say thanks to everybody for checking Listen, it out. Listening, right? and, you know. Uh, yeah, and, and thanks to you, Tay. It's been fun chatting. Yes, thanks for having um, me, man. Bring back some memories, you know? <laughs> absolutely, yeah. I'm, I'm happy you're my first guest. Mm -hmm. um, Hopefully we can do another episode sometime or maybe get some other friends in on it. And yeah. Do some three ways. I don't know. Right? Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Because there's a lot of cool collectors out there that everyone, like I said, comes with, comes with uh, different walks of life. And it's mm -hmm. nice to hear different, stories. different stories. Like, Yeah, I feel like I know you a little bit better today. You know? yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and the same with you. Like, I didn't know you missed on 64 and stuff. Yeah. Right? I missed on PlayStation. So. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So... Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so I want you guys to do me a favor too. Uh, go over to Tay's channel here at Life of Tay Gaming. I'll leave his link in the description. Um, he's working his way up mm -hmm. on the subscribers. He'd really appreciate some some support, guys. So go on over there and check him out. He's a great guy. He's building that Wii U set, does awesome pickups. So mm -hmm. yeah, definitely uh, head over there and leave a comment, subscribe. Yes, you guys. I, I appreciate that. No, it's L Y F E, you know, not L I F E. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, check for that link and uh, we'll have it on there. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate you guys heading over there and showing him some love. Mm -hmm. He's a cool guy. Um, I really appreciate you guys heading over there for him. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's going to do it for this episode of our podcast. Again, thanks everybody for hanging out and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Yeah, on the next one. Mm -hmm. All right, that's going to wrap up today's video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'd really appreciate it. You can follow me on social media. The information is in the description below. I want to thank everybody for watching. I am the Console Collector. And until the next video, happy gaming.